In the imperial calendar year of 2276, Baron Carrard from Canals gathered a formidable army of valiant knights. Their mission was to journey south and east, embarking on a crusade beyond the Badlands to vanquish the mighty Tomb King, Setha the Amaranthan. Although the Baron met his end during this crusade, his knights ultimately triumphed, leading to the destruction of Setta. This defeat infuriated Setra the Imperishable, who consumed by his vengeance amassed a vast undead army. He set sail towards the border princes intent on retribution. His forces swiftly besieged the settlements of Kesos and Thesos, instilling dread in the neighboring regions. Despite the border princes inflicting significant losses on the undead, the settlements ultimately succumbed. In the midst of this chaos, Prince Tolethor, commander of Setra's legions, advanced northeast to besiege the citadel Buelia. Sir Cecil Gaston, a Bretonian knight exiled for years, organized a robust defense. He dispatched messengers to the Bretonian king, who was entangled in a fierce conflict against a formidable orc Wa. The king, despite his own battles, encouraged his southern dukes to lend support. Duke Gastille, known as the Red Hand of Brian, heeded the call. He declared an errantry crusade to reinforce Gaston. Meanwhile, Gaston headed to Matoria, anticipating the bulk of Cetra's forces. The defenders at Citadel Buelia braced for Prince Tolether's siege. Fortunately, Duke Gastille and his troops, along with Lady Elise, arrived just in time. They successfully vanquished Prince Tolether and his Hierophant, breaking the undead siege. Duke Gastille promptly marshaled his army to reinforce Matoria. But the question remained, would they reach in time? Gaston fortified Matoria's defenses as best as he could, awaiting the imminent undead assault. His challenge was to hold off the enemy long enough for Duke Gastille's reinforcements to arrive. Matthew here from MiniWarGaming.com with Steve from MiniWarGaming and Mountain Miniatures. That'll be important in a minute. Welcome to the first ever Old World Ooh, Battle Report been waiting for this. on Mini Wargaming. Hey, Warhammer Fantasy is dead. Long live Warhammer Fantasy. Right? It never died for me. It never died. That's <laughs> right. And uh, in this game, we've got a special narrative battle for you. We've been specially, we've been given some stuff early by Games Workshop. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Games Workshop. So that we could show off a very specific narrative scenario that is in an arcane journal. Now, what is an arcane journal? Well, if you are familiar with Blood Bowl and you know Spike Magazine, right. it's a similar idea where it comes up with new scenarios. Ed, uh, expansions to your armies, all that kind of stuff. Cool stuff in there. Yeah, so this one's the Kingdom of Bretonia. So it has more details of the history of Bretonia. It has a special narrative scenario, which we're going to play out today. And it also has the Errantry Crusade yep. and the Bretonian Exiles, yep. which combines Bretonian stuff and Empire stuff to let you represent narratively some really cool forces. Over on Warhammer Community, there's actually an article written about this, and they refer back to this battle report as well. So if you want to actually download this scenario for free, it's available right now. So that's a special gift from Games Workshop to you guys. I'll put a link in the description, or you can go to miniwargaming.com slash old world, and that'll redirect you over there. So in this game, as we can already see, we are determining the fate a Matoria, if that's how you say it. I'm just going to say it, Matoria. And that way it's like, yeah, if I pronounce it wrong, it's just my accent. Mataria. Mataria. We're going to Mataria. <laughs> and, uh, and the cool thing about this, I want to say really quickly, is typically I'm not a big fan of narrative scenarios that are written right. in these books yep. because they tell you what happens and then they say, now you can recreate it. This one actually leads up. The way that I did the narrative intro, that's a summary of what comes in the book. And they actually put a dot, dot, dot. You flip the page and it's the scenario. Yep. That's, that's so cool. cool. It is, yeah. They're basically saying, you tell me what happens next, and now that's canon for you. So obviously, if they ever want to tell a future story, they'll have to decide what happened, but it's, it's really cool. It's really cool. So this is going to determine the fate of Matoria in the old world in mini wargaming, because we're going to be doing a huge campaign later on with a huge map of the old world made with Hex and Hills tiles. We're going to be tracking armies Total War Warhammer style, where we actually track the individual armies and go around and conquer, and it'll be so freaking awesome, and that'll be coming out probably in about a month, I'm hoping, by the time we have everything ready. And I know I'm talking a lot here, so let's get to what the actual narrative battle is. So in the Battle of Matoria, Steve will be taking on the role of the defenders. Mm -hmm. So he is uh, officially commanding Sir Cecile Gaston. And he has a group of Bretonian exiles. Now, Cecile, of course, is still a little beloved by Bretonians. And so when he sent help, I'm sorry, asked for help from the king, uh, the king is in the middle of an orc war. 
but he, he a duke did reply. Duke Gastille and Lady Estille were both on their way here. They conquered some of the undead along the way. Lady Elise. Sorry, did I say Estille? Lady yeah. Elise. Lady Elise Ducard. Lady Elise Ducard. I got the names right. I did it in the narrative <laughs> intro, all right? It was right then. <laughs> Maybe I've been reading it. And they're on their way to reinforce. Like, we're talking Helm's Deep style, where it's like, look to the, in this case, west for the sure. first light at dawn. And that's not where, how dawn works, but whatever. <laughs> and they're on their way. So the narrative scenario, as you can see here on the screen, shows that we are deployed with the defenders. Deploy they're defending a hilled area. That's where Cecile Gaston is. And they're just trying to hold off the undead long enough. And their forces are basically like peasants. Yep. You've got some Bretonian knights. It's a handful of knights, but it's mostly a peasantry force. Yeah, it's a peasantry force. It's a professional soldiers and yeoman guard. Exactly. And so that's that's kind of the defending force. But in reserve, we have Gastille's forces, which is a, a separate force, because these are Bretonian exiles, whereas the force that is coming in, they're specifically an errantry crusade, yep. which is unique to this arcane journal. And so both of these types of armies are unique to this arcane journal. So it represents these cool narrative things, which I love. I love. I love it. So you can see all these awesome, and Steve worked his butt off. And Luca helped too, but the painting that Steve did on these is just mwah, so good. Thank you. And on the attacking side, Luca is actually going to be taking command of the Tomb King forces. And uh, he's got 3,000 points. It's just a, a grand army, which is like a, a standard composition. And this is being led by a Tomb King. There's a big high uh, Hierophant in there, a level 4 Lich Priest. And you got like a whole smattering of stuff. Skeleton warriors, Tomb Guard, archers. You got scorpions and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's, it's good old Tomb King stuff. And if these look familiar to some of our veterans, yeah, these are the ones I used to play. And don't worry, I will be picking these up and playing them uh, for some Old World stuff. In fact, tomorrow, the official start of the pre-order for the Old World, there's going to be a battle report on Steve's channel, Mountain Miniatures, that I will be on. Um, and so we'll be playing a game yep. of uh, Old World as well. So go check that out. I'll put links... Not yet, because it's not out yet. But, you know, come back to, I don't know, go check out his channel. I'll put a link to his channel right now. Go subscribe, and then you won't miss it. Okay? Mountain Miniatures. It's awesome. I'll he premiere, so there'll be a link. Okay, oh, there you go. There there'll you be go. a link, and you can follow that. Anyways, this has been a super long intro. I appreciate your patience. But one last thing. Because the launch of the Old World, which is January 20th, Saturday, January 20th, Steve, Luca, and I... And John, Johnny Payne, Johnny Payne, will be flying over to the UK and going to Nottingham yes. and participating in the open day at Games Workshop and running a huge narrative scenario that is not stressing Steve out whatsoever. Alrighty, I've got it all done now. Yeah, how many <laughs> points do you have ready to, to, to bring over on the plane? Twenty thousand, if we need it. I think we're bringing twelve. So, like about twelve thousand. Yeah. It's going to be a grand, one large game run for ten hours. And if you come there, and I know that most of you won't be able to, but if you come there on that day, it's no tickets required. You come on in, you stand in line, you get to walk up, you get to do a couple things, and then you walk away and the next guy goes. And so it's going to be like hundreds of players, I'm hoping, will uh, participate in this one battle. Come see us, come see us. Come yeah, die. and it's going to be awesome. It's just going to be awesome. And, so, and at the same time at that open day, there will be like demos, there will be all sorts of stuff there. So go check it out. So we're going to be there, and we're, we're excited for that. I'll take videos of it as well. And we'll make a video of it of some sort. But yeah, so okay. thank you again for Games, to Games Workshop for letting us do all this awesome crap to let us put the scenario out early and for inviting us to go down to Nottingham to do that. So I'll put links below. But you've been waiting for the game. And so now let's get to the game of can the Tomb Kings beat Steve before his reinforcements arrive? Straight up points and an extra 250 points for whoever holds the hill in the middle. Nice and easy. Let's jump into it. Starting on the strategy phase, the Tomb King has the My Will Be Done rule. So he'll do a leadership check. And we are obviously going to choose the Tomb Guard here and increase their weapon skill. Now let's do movement here. We're going to do movement because I don't need weapon skill defensively. So leadership check on the King. His will be done. So they get D3 extra movement this turn. Again, Undead cannot march no matter what, but they can at least do this. Naturally, he is a king of Nahakar, so he's got the crown of a king. Don't need to use it for now, but that will help me reinvigorate my units later. And we can go to some spell casting with my Hierophant over here, my Lich Priest, who I nearly forgot where he was. He's loaded up with a bunch of spells we're going to do in the strategy phase. The first one is going to be the Incantation of Cursed Blades, which is a signature from the lore of Nahakara. Cast on a 7, we definitely got that with a 10. 
because he is level four wizard and you add the wizard level to the roll. Now, would you like to risk the deny? I am in range. I don't want to risk it. I don't think the spell's that uh, impactful enough. Yep, it, it only help a couple of the attacks over here. And when I mention risk, it's because when you do wizardly dispels, if you roll a double one, you also miscast. That is a nice new addition to the game. And just double checking his command range, it is eight inches at leadership eight, so that will affect everything with an eight of him, mostly for shooting this round. And nothing else to really cast uh, as spirit leeches too far away. And moving on to the casket, I am going to wait to the shooting phase to cast the light of death. I don't really need the protection right now. And that will be it. We're good to go to movement. And I got a very easy no across the board for charge declarations. Nothing's Fair. really quite in range. So we're going to go to our remaining moves. We skip right past compulsory. We have none of that to do. I got no nothing in reserve. So we're going to go right to movement. Uh, in fact, I should. I'm gonna go. I got a conveyance spell on him. It's the Steed of Shadows. I'm gonna risk it a little bit. This is from the Lore of Death. Oh, I got an 11 on the roll, which is plus four. That's. Uh, I can't stop that then. That's gonna be really difficult. I'm gonna go ahead and go uh, the Faded Dispel here. I really don't want Luca to get this off. Only a double six will stop this. So I'm just gonna. Nah, not even close. All right, two and a four. So that will give him Fly 10, which as the undead he can march, uh, which is nice and ethereal which is very similar to the older iterations of it he can only be hurt by magical attacks but he can still crumble to death and everything so my wizard was in range to dispel that i uh, could have added her to spell level to dispel but you need a double six anyways uh i need double six anyways because her level wasn't high enough to dispel that uh but i risked the miscast on her but once per turn you do a faded dispel you add no wizard just anywhere on the table to dispel uh it's the same double six so i use that as once per turn using that up now and there's no risk to it other than as a resource. Yeah, there's no miscast on the yeah. fate of this spell. Exactly. Okay, that'll be Steed of Shadows. It's actually called Spectral Steed. Steed of Shadows is his old name. And we're going to go just to the remaining moves. I'll show you the before and after, because nothing too technical here is going to happen. And we're back. Like I mentioned, just a lot of remaining moves. Posturing on this side of the battlefield, getting my monstrous creature and my behemoth, the... Titan, or sorry, the Necrolith Colossus and the Tomb Scorpion. The chariots only wield a little bit and reform their front just to harass them with some missile fire, as well as this detachment of skeleton archers for the skeleton uh, warrior unit. I decided not to fly my little Hierophant around because I want to get to the side of the knights to harass them with... Sorry, the spell in the name was Unquiet Spirits. I was trying to think of that. Uh, but the only option I have is to fly right in front of them and hit them with the spell and then die to passive combat res when he charges me. So that's not ideal. And the rest of the moves, again, they had the extra three inches of movement. That's why they pulled ahead a little bit, a little impetuous. But I am confident in their capabilities. The skeleton's reinforcing their left side. And then this little unit of archers. I forgot to move them. I'm just going to move up a little bit. Oop. They have arrows of the SF, which is a special rule that allow them to ignore all modifiers to shooting. Magically guided nasty undead arrows, but they just hit on fives. Now, I should note that move does get the front rank in range to actually fire their war bows into the men-at-arms on the hill over there. I'll be giving a volley fire for that. These okay. are yeoman guard. Oh, sorry, yeoman guard, my bad. My bad. Is that different than men-at-arms? <laughs> yeah, for exiles only. Oh, it's an yeah. exile thing, gotcha. All right. And then my left flank moved forward in their formation, as you see here, with their variety of movement characteristics, just pushing up towards Steve's right flank, as you can see. Uh, unaware of the Bretonian reinforcements coming, or maybe aware and just... Don't care. Apathy reigns supreme on this side of the battlefield. And one thing to note is if you are an old fantasy player and you've been playing the previous editions, you can move within an inch of your own units and of terrain nowadays because they have much cleaner charge rules in this edition that uh, kind of clear up uh, any awkward situations you might find yourself in. I'll bring us to shooting. I'm going to start over here because I'm already here. I'll have five of these archers fire at the men or the human. Guard? Yeoman Guard, yep. There it is. These five bows are simply going to hit on fives. Uh, there is normally a lot of modifiers to the game, but the Skeleton Archers, or most of the undead on the Tomb King side, ignore those, but they just have a bad BS in general. And fives. We got two. Look at that. Strength three, so four is to wound. One wound, no armor penetration. Light armor and shields is a five armor save. Oh, no. That's one dead man's. Yoink. And we're going to open up the Casket of Souls here and cast Light of Death. It's bound power level three, so I add three to this roll. We got ourselves a 10. And we're, sorry, we're gonna target the uh, the yeoman on the hill. I definitely wanna stop that. So my outcast wizard here will definitely try. Oh, she. Oh! Hey, okay. Matthew's okay. in the room, now you know. We got a miscast well, off the rip. This outcast wizard 
has a special rule. Ah, oh, good. When I miscast, I rolled extra d6 and discard the highest. Oh, because she's uh, not as trained to manipulate. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. More of a self-taught wizard. Uh, oh, jeez. Oh, no, that's oh, good, that's good, that's good. That's good. You, so you rolled an 11. High, rolling high is good. There is a miscast chart, and this is the power drain result because you get rid of one of the sixes, as for the Okash rule. For miscasting, you typically want to roll high because it's not too bad. The lower end of the chart is where all the rough stuff is. This is power drain, so the spell is dispelled automatically, and the wizard can no longer dispel spells for the remainder of this turn. But that's not so bad because I only really have one more spell to cast, and it's a fireball from the Ruby Ring of Ruin as um, the soul spell I have is too far away. And coming over to the wizard, casting the Ruby Ring of Ruins Fireball. Now again, it's bound items. We don't use the wizard's wizard level here. We use the power level of the magic item. And plus two to the roll, ooh, ooh. a five. Fireball is an eight to cast. We will end it there. I got a couple more used to fire with. Do five bows, which is a so we're just gonna target the yeoman on the uh, the, the mounts there. Oh, I don't wanna go for the knights. I'm gonna go for the knights, right beside them. I just hit with the arrows. Magic arrows got two hits. These are forced to wound the knights. Nada. And moving on to the chariots. They are all gonna fire their bows towards the same targets. The knights of the, those are knights of the realm, right? The are knights of the realm right yeah, here. Yeah, the errant knights are beside them. No, those are questing. A oh, questing knights. <laughs> uh, they're gonna have six shots because each one of the chariot riders has a bow. Ah, uh, we got three hits and no wounds. That will conclude my turn, turn one. Uh, forgetting I had Incantation of the Cursed Blades up, that's reroll hit rolls of one for any attacks. They had one one and they had two. I'm just gonna roll them together. It doesn't change much here. Uh, no, it didn't help. <laughs> that's usually how it goes with the, you forget your rules. Going over to the final thing to shoot, we got a Screaming Skull Catapult. I'm not gonna have any line of sight to any targets because of all of my army in the way, but luckily it's got the Bombardment Rule, which ignores that, though it does still scatter a wee bit. Oh, scrap that. I just realized I have a target on a hill. So, we're probably gonna go for that. We can see targets on elevated hills and they can see me. It's gonna go for the Yeoman Guard, though, in the middle. Maybe I'll get lucky. Now, a new thing about uh, catapults for new players and old players, you actually don't aim over a model anymore. You have to aim at the exact center of a unit, which means sometimes you'll be going right beside or between a couple of models. Which means it'll come crashing down in the middle of the unit there, if we're so lucky. For our artillery, or the catapult in particular, I'm gonna roll a scatter die and an artillery die. Misfire! If you're a new player and curious, the misfire is a one in six chance on the artillery die. We're rolling the stone thrower specific misfire table. Most war machines have their own. I got a three result. That means there's a malfunction with the device. Unfortunately, it was a lethal malfunction. And one of the crew member is destroyed in the process, leaving the crew with two wounds remaining. And the catapult, as they're trying to fix it, will not function until my next turn. We'll be firing it on my next turn. I'll fire it on turn three charts are very similar to the last edition as well if you are a veteran player anyways that will be the end of my turn as we have no combats to resolve at all we can go to the Bretonian exiles turn one all right for the exiles strategy phase i got nothing to do yeah i, I have uh, the commands on the king i will be done but you don't have any character well, abilities i have one rally spell. cry but that's not don't, for now don't need yeah. to yeah, i have one spell that's uh right now it, it gives one of my units frenzy not appropriate time i see i see <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to the movement phase, which means no charges. No charges, buddy. No charges. And there's no compulsory moves. So we are going to show you where the Bretonian Exiles decide to posture up. Probably going to be pretty reserved because they have a pretty large ambush. Not ambushing, but reserve force coming in here. So we'll be right back once we see where these go. That is all movement done, mostly over here on, well, Steve's left flank. Kind of push on forward, obviously. Infantry center kind of stayed put. We're trying to hold the hill. And then the skirmishers kind of moved into my uh, peasants over here to make room for red knights just in case uh, they show up next turn. Let's cast this spell. We have Doombolt from Dark Magic on this Elkaz Wizard. We're going to go right for the big scary unit coming right at us. This is an 8 to cast, and she is a level 3. Not bad. That's an 8 in total, so I will go with a wizardly dispel here. I add plus 4 to my roll. Oh, seven. I, I tied it. But the nice thing is in this new edition, you have to roll higher than the enemy wizard roll. Uh, so it just lines up with Age of Sigmar in 40k. It's the same rule across the board now. <laughs> now, this is unique as it is a magic missile. If you play Total War Warhammer, you'll be very familiar with the conjuration of a giant dark meteor crashing right in the middle of the unit. So this Doom Bolt specifically says, even though 
you, the range is good enough to there. You put the template right in the middle of the unit as it comes down and right in the middle of the unit will be between those two models, which means they'll be directly hit and you're gonna resolve it like a blast. And I'll show you exactly how that works. And a good tip, if you have any movement trays that are whatever measurements you need, really, in this case, 25 millimeters, this is where it would be in the Tomb Guard unit, so you can kind of see exactly what it would hit. It's going to hit two models exactly, fully encompassed, and then the 10 squares in the perimeter are kind of covered by the template, which means those models have a 50-50 chance of stepping out of the way by representing it as a four-up roll-up to see if they're hit or not. Four-up, they're hit. One, two, three, they're not. But you can do the math on tools like this. And like I mentioned, in this new edition of Warhammer Fantasy Battles, you used to have to do this. The hole would have to go directly over a model. They want you to put it directly in the middle of the unit now. But because I'm five, wa five deep, that means there'd be two on both sides. I mean, that would be the exact middle of the unit. If I was six deep, then this would be the middle of the unit. So you just have to watch out for that stuff. 10 guys, maybe hit. These are the, every four up is a hit. Which, Ooh, that's, that's, that's not bad, eight hits. You're gonna be strength three with an AP of two, which means I'll get no armor save at all. And you're wounding me on fives because I'm toughness four. Hey. Two. All right. All undead have regeneration, uh, which is a six up save on the tomb guard here. Uh, they're both. They do not regenerate those wounds. They are destroyed by the doom bolt. But most of them just shook off the damage. I want to move left to right pretty much. I'm going to have these archers or bowmen fire at these because I can't really see the cal or the chariots very well. Some of them are blocking your yeah. archers. Yeah. So uh, eight shots in the front rank, four in the back rank because they have volley fire. So half of them can fire in the second rank. Boom. We're hitting on uh, for ranged uh, fives. Oh, because of uh, they didn't move. So the normal modifiers for shooting, if you're not playing on dead, is minus one to hit if you moved. If you're over half range, is negative one to hit. And then there's things for if things are in cover. Soft cover, hard cover, uh, there'd be further negatives as well. And on top of that, if there's any special rules that unit might have you're targeting for negatives to hit, those will apply as well. And fours. Boom. Well, you wound me three times. That's not bad. I don't have any armor on these skeletons, but we'll see if they regenerate the wounds. Six up, they stand back up. No, three of them go down. We'll have, I guess it doesn't really matter. We'll have those two archers left. And normally, a unit would panic if it loses more than 25% of its models in a single shooting phase. However, the undead don't like to play with psychology, so they don't care. These mounted yeomen are going to fire at them. They don't have, they have 360 lines, right? They're, they're skirmishing, skirmishers. yes. Um, they have no rule of targets. They're hitting on sixes from uh, moving and half range. Only three half of them range. are in range, yeah. Oh, sorry, no, sorry, sorry. Um, they're, it's, it's uh, hitting on six of the five dice. A minus one hit for moving, minus one hit for more than half range. I don't know why I had three days in my hand. I have oh, one I hit. see. One hit. Yep. Four and, wound. Ooh, another one. Regeneration? No. One more dead skeleton. I will do these ones. I, I'll just finish them off. Uh, hitting on fives because they're within short range. Yep. Two just, hits. Just the negative for moving. And one more wound. Regen. Oh! oh! Stands back up. Wow. Dies, regenerates the wound. Coming to my attention, we might want to describe how the new line of sight works in this edition. If you played 5th, 6th, and 7th edition Warhammer Fantasy Battles, you'd be very familiar with it. Uh, this edition is if, like, this model can see that model, therefore that this model and its unit can see that unit. Now, if this model is to try and see those knights there, skirmishers might be a bad example, but in this case, it should work out. I would draw a line to those knights, any part of those knights I wanted to, and if that line I draw, that very thin line, passes over any other model, there's no line of sight. It is very good. I'm a big fan of that because it makes it, you kind of generally have to shoot the things that are in front of you. Not all of the time, but generally. That's why when we were talking about their line of sight earlier into the chariots, about up to three of those models were drawing lines through these guys, therefore unable to see the chariots. But maybe not though, maybe just one or two. But then again, you might as well take all the shots yeah. into the one target instead of the two missing ones. Moving on to your trebuchet. Okay, well, I get so many targets, I don't know where to go. Yep. I almost feel like I want to get into an artillery fight with you. You could. So, I want to weaken your monsters, though. I'm going to go get into an artillery fight with you. No, I, I like this spot. If I scatter, there's so many good other things to hit. So we're going to trebuchet right on top of this guy's head. And all war machines can pivot uh, about their center when they move at, without suffering the move or, move or shoot penalty special rule they have. So we're going to have the so trebuchet. We'll go we'll uh, for this giant. Over, go for him. Maximum scatter. Watch me get a direct hit, though. Well, we're going to be firing at him, not because the building's all ruined and everything. We still see the target here. And he is a, he's got the large target rule as well, where other models and everything don't block line of sight. So in this case, he'd have, like, heavy cover. However, that doesn't matter for a war machine. So, so a direct hit will hit him. Uh, 
Of course. It's a direct hit. <laughs> so it'll go right on top of them, and I don't believe it will be touching other models. Boom, right. In this case, that's right the middle of the unit, and it's a hit. No, oh, does it wound? It'll You're be a straight wound. Ten. Two to wound. One's always fail. That's a wound. AP good enough to go right through Four. him, but constructs also have regeneration. Oh, he not. It's a six up still. So this trebuchet is D three plus one damage for the center hole. Three damage. Three damage on the big guy. No longer is it D six. With that clean hit, he's got two out of his five remaining wounds. He's pretty much torn a piece by that giant rock hurled at him. Now we're going on to these peasants are bowmen. They're gonna fire at the cab up front. Two of them have uh, some wall ruined building to deal with. So we're hitting on sixes. Yeah. With a negative a modifier from that wall. The rest are hitting on fives. We got three hits on the cab. Let me tell if there's three, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Didn't matter. No wounds. All right. Four's fair. a wound. And we have one last unit of skirmishing archers to fire at the cab. So they're they moved right on sixes. And range. Yeah, moves in range, yep. And then uh, fours. Two Twos. Oh, they have light armor and shields. That's five up. Oh, oh nice. nice. The armor protects them. No longer. Yeah, you know what? You just get armor saves based on your armor. There's like a, <laughs> there is an old rule in 8th edition and some other editions where you, if you were mounted, you got a bonus to your save. They got rid of that. Because APs are all generally lower yeah, in the game yeah. as well. Yeah. And the shooting phase, I have two reserve moves on these guys here. So they're going to move again. So long as they didn't charge or march. Yep. We're gonna go ahead and uh, be brave peasants and sell our souls to buy time for the, the noble knights. Fair. Well, this is part of the plan, right? Uh, I do have reserve moves on the chariots. I didn't bother doing them because I didn't want to get too close to the knights. Yeah, we're just gonna get a charge from me. Yeah, no thank you. Not today. One ending there and one creeping up on the other side of the windmill. And that'll be the end of round one in general. And again, no combat to resolve. We'll get there soon. Well, this round coming up. So we're gonna go to Tomb King's turn two. Now, in my command phase, we are gonna go with my will be done again on the Nehekaran King here, the Tomb King. And uh, his leadership's 10 is what I'm trying to roll equal to or under. And we do. So I choose one of the rules again, D3 extra movement, weapon skill or initiative. For now, I'm gonna go movement. And we're gonna increase it by two. There'll be movement six instead of seven this turn. As Crown of Nehekar is nice, but it won't help me here. He can resurrect fallen warriors for basic units like skeleton warriors, skeleton archers, and I think skeleton horsemen. Unfortunately, not tomb guard though. Ooh, good. I could use my hierophant to target the tomb guard to bring them back, but there's only two missing. And I kind of want the archers back to get those shots. So I'm gonna use his resurrecting the fallen warriors. His rule is called a rise. He could target any Nahakar and undead unit. It's actually nice to have a lot of Lich Priests in your list. Maybe like small level ones here or there just to help uh, Arise Fallen Warriors. Uh, the amount of models I bring back is based on the target. In this case, I'm going to target an infantry unit. That'll be, I believe, wizard level plus D3. But to succeed, I have to do a leadership check. Hey! I roll an 8, and he should be leadership 8, actually, maybe even 9 on a Lich Priest. No, it's 8, because I already told you earlier. <laughs> and that'll be D3 plus... Four, so that's automatically back to full. There's only four missing, and he's level four. Look at that, nice and healthy yeah, for them. Now, because we cast Spectral Steed last turn, it is a remains in place spell. So it is there until Steve decides to get rid of it, or until I decide to get rid of it. But that's a nice spell I'll probably never want, really want to get rid of. No real target for Spirit Leech yet, as they did change Hex's enhancements to require the front arc of uh, the wizard. We'll try to cast Cursed Blades though on himself. Same thing, that aura of rerolling hit rolls of one for attacks. This is cast on a seven. We add four. Okay, we got a pretty good number. Total of 13 on that. Steve does not want to risk a miscast with his wizard and this spell is not super, super strong. I do want to explain. Um, so I don't think this spell is that the big deal. I want to risk a wizardly, uh, sorry, a wizardly miscast on this. Um, and I don't want to use my table miscast. Because if Luke ends up doing some weird tactical thing where he gets his wizard to fly out of line of sight to something, I want to save it, uh, save my faded dispel for that if Luca does something. It's kind of a mini game we're playing here behind the camera. Right. And uh, that'll be it. I do have a hex. It's called Spirit Leech. Different than what it used to do, if you're familiar with the name. Uh, but I should note that for this is for veterans, so if you're new into fantasy, none of this will matter. Uh, it's more something for me to get used to and Steve as well. Uh, enhance all spells require the wizard to target something within their front vision arc. It does not need line of sight. Magic missiles need line of sight. But Hex's enhancement is used to cast all around the wizard, behind them, to the left, to the right, but now it's forward. And you can't cast spells into melee anymore. They did really rain magic in, which is a uh, nice breath of fresh air compared to 8th edition. And uh, it's good to see just things to note for veterans. More of a visual that the Spirit Leech Hex has to kind of go out like this way. 
in general because that's where the wizard is. Now, and it's nice because you're doing your strategy phase, so you have to kind of pre-plan your movement on the turn before, and your enemy, your uh, opponent gets a turn to reposition as well. Now, of course, the wizard can cast assailment spells and self spells in combat, but he can't do magic missiles, hexes, or enhancements, unless said otherwise. Okay, incantation and curse of blades is an enhancement, but the range is self, so we can cast it if he's tied up in combat. Anything you buff yourself with. But we should be good to go right on to the movement phase. And I do have charges to declare. So mostly over here because <laughs> of this nonsense. So I will declare a charge with my chariots. Uh, and probably just the tomb scorpion, I think. I'm going to hold back on the monster, the colossus there. Now, now that all my charges are declared, because I don't want to declare anymore, Steve will respond with all the targets. So they can hold, flee, but I gotta double check. That guy might my guy have terror. Yeah, I was just saying. I was also my moon strike is ten. You're nine, right? Uh, I'm probably nine. Yes. Right. Just double checking. This thing had terror. It does not. Uh, how would you like to react? Sorry, ignore everything I said about unit strength. Didn't apply here. Uh, that's a fear. <laughs> that's a fear thing. Um, all undead cause fear. If you want to charge undead, there is a mechanic we'll explain later that comes down to unit strength and whatnot. But for now, we're good. It will show up in combat though. If we get there, would you like to flee or hold? I'm gonna have to hold. Hold! Yep, there's no terror forcing you to flee, so they're charging, that's charging, and that is about it. The way charging works is you roll 2d6, and boop, you take the higher die, and you add it to their movement characteristic. Now, they move 8, plus 5. However, both of these units have a special rule called Swift Stride, which represents things like cavalry, chariots, generally fast monsters. Things that are swift. <laughs> things that are swift, and they like to stride. And they, and they and they have a stride. <laughs> uh, it does two things. You can only ever declare a charge target or charge against a target that is within your maximum charge range. Now, in the case of things that move eight, that would be 14 because the highest you could roll on two dice, the highest is a six. If you have this, this is very different for veterans. This is a veteran thing, clarification. This is a big change in the game. Uh, as far as I understand, you then swift stride, add an additional d6 to it, but it doesn't increase your maximum charge range because you don't know what you're going to roll yet on that. So what that rule allows you to do is charge, uh, declare a charge against a target that is three inches further away than your initial maximum range. So in the case of chariots, they could declare a charge against something within 17 inches. So That's to, the, to re restate that, yeah. Um, if you have Swift Stride, you can declare a charge that is three inches longer than your maximum charge range would typically be. Yeah. And then after you roll your charge, you roll an additional die. Yes, correct. And add that to your pool. To do it quickly, once you're used to it, you roll, boom, 2d6. You take the high die, and then you add d6 to it afterwards. Sorry. There you go. Aha, in this case, that. <laughs> but no matter what, we're going to make this charge with them. And then you would roll for the Scorpion. I think he's moved like seven or six. Doesn't really matter. Boom, boom, boom. He's gonna make you take the six, add the D6 or just ride even further. Now we're charging skirmishers. The unit goes into contact with the first model and then they all line up to me. They're unable to move more than, in this case, eight, because that's what their movement is. It's stuck in my fingers. Yeah, uh, but so if they can all get in a base contact with the enemy in their fighting rank, they can. So say I had like more going this way, more going that way, they'd all have to line up. In this case, just five dudes lining up to these guys. And then he would have made it in two, it's just, uh, where he was. Effectively the scorpion just effectively the scorpion just goes in to the side of them. Now, for veterans and stuff, normally you cannot wheel or move through your own units, but they this edition gives you wiggle room to, to just to get rid of all the feel bads of the old editions of like, oh you can't technically wheel past you so your charge fails. Charges rarely fail in this edition other than being out of range of a charge. So for what Lucas talking for for new people, what would happen previously is he would have been you have the angle to come in, turn my hands in the way, like there, not being able to close the door. So I close, I close make the door contact means there, yeah. Closing the door this way. Yeah, but aligning now, with the enemy is the. You now he's going to wheel right past his model. Yeah, just wheel right through him. As long as you don't end, you can't end your base on top of another base, but you can move through your allied bases. You can't move through enemy ones. That was it for my charges. So compulsory moves, I don't have any because I had no reserves or anything like that. Uh, we're right on to remaining moves. With that, we are simply going to push forward and hope that Steve's reinforcements don't show up quite yet. So this flank is going to push up. This is probably going to stay still. They're going to move forward and they... This is the unit I'm not too sure I want to do anything with because this guy's got Spectral Steed active and I could zip him somewhere and try and hit the Knights, but I don't want to be in their front arc. But then again, all of this is going to blow through and be exposed, so I might want to be in a position to counteract the knights anyways. But we'll see when that pops up. And we're done moving. It was a little complicated, uh, only because I just didn't know what I wanted to do. Coming over to this flank here, I decided just to 
push them forward. Only because if I posture them and reform them to face where the enemy reinforcements are coming from, Steve could just be like, oh, I'm just gonna stay out of your arc over there. Maybe back here, stuff like that. So I said, you know what? I'll wait till he actually shows up and then I'll answer it there. You have time to respond. Yeah, I have time to respond. He can't charge me right away. I can't charge him right away. He keeps it kind of even and then we both get to be in the position we want to be in. And the game is a little bit more enjoyable that way. <laughs> I want my guys here now. Yeah, <laughs> That's exactly. what I want to be in. Yeah. So we got the War Sphinx and the Cav up front. I am outside of the charge range of the... Are those men at arms? These are men at arms, yes. yes. What's the difference? What's the difference between well, men okay, for me? So, so on my defense force here, um, I'm able to take uh, what I call yeoman guard. Yes. They're just basically better leadership. Are they? Is that it? Effectively, for the purpose of this game, yes. Okay. Are they one more weapon skill at all? Or? Uh, ooh, actually, you know what? They actually might be now that you say that. Yes. I think they're a weapon skill three. Because Let me double check. Men at arms are weapon skill two, yeah. One more Yeoman Guard or Weapon Skill 3. And Leadership 6? And Leadership uh, 6 across the board. Nice. Whereas the Champions of uh, uh, Peasants are, are Leadership 6 anyway. Let me just double check if they're Weapon Skill 2. Yeah, so uh, these guys are Weapon Skill 2. Uh, the Leadership 6 on the Champion. Whereas they're all Leadership 6 and Weapon Skill 3. They're all veterans, essentially, yeah. in a way. They're at, mm, those are technically oh, they, professional soldiers. They literally have the Veteran uh, keyword as well. Oh, and yeah. Shield Wall. There you go, yeah. Those are, you can tell, like, generally if you're new to fantasy, weapon skill three means you're kind of a professional soldier. Like, you're, you're a trained soldier, weapon skill four That's would be That's your basic a, across the line, but yeah. yeah. You're, you're in the military, you've been trained, yeah. all that stuff. Whereas the peasants, the men at arms are weapon skill two. <laughs> These are literal yeah. peasants, hey, put on this. Here's a shield. Over there. <laughs> Here's this halberd thing. Exactly, stand over there and do your best. Be an adult. <laughs> and back on track, these archers did reform because they're not gonna have much to do over here facing that way. That thing's kind of stuck where it is, but it could still be useful. Our skeletons moved up. Our Tomb King moved up with his uh, honor guard there. Just She's run him down him. before he gets... Uh, uh, She's just taunting him. Yeah. I did, because he's got Spectral Steed on, he's got Ethereal and Fly. Gonna move over here because in this, uh, another thing about magic for veterans, you cannot march and shoot magic missiles or things of like that sort. So keep that in mind. It's a new rule in this new edition. But we flew over here with move 10, and we do have uh, Cursed Blades active. Pulling the Cursed Blades away from here, but I don't really need the help over here too, too, too much. And they moved forward a couple of inches and wheeled just to shoot some knights. This is all charged up, keeping the Colossus here and the Ushabti here just to counter charge any nonsense that comes this direction. And with that, we can go to the shooting phase. I will start with these archers firing five shots into those knights. Ives to hit, whoosh, all miss. They're engaged, so they're unable to fire their ranged attacks. And that's it for shooting over here. I do want to point out a cool trick. Well, not cool, it's just a trick we do for War Machines. When they're unable to fire on their following turn, you just turn them backwards. That way you know to skip it. And then at the end of your turn, you can flip it back the direction it was facing. They have nothing to fire at. The Sepulchral Stalkers have a range attack, but it's not long enough range. So the only thing I'm gonna fire is the Light of Death from this bad boy here. And if I have range, I'm gonna probably shoot through this gap at some of those archers there with like a fireball. Just check the range. I'm gonna launch a fireball through this into those peasants. You can see everything. I'm on a hill. Oh, you're on a hill. I'm on a hill. hill. That's right. I gotta remember that. Hey, we, we recently just played all those editions yeah. and everything too. Yeah. You know what? I no, I'm gonna go for the archers anyways because I think I, I think I'm okay. All the same here. Now that I will admit they're trained soldiers, but we're undead tomb guard. I think we're good. Uh, fireball. We cast at nine, but it's uh, bound to power level two, so I roll an eleven. Would you like to wizardly dispel this? Yeah, I'll wizardly dispel it. You get plus three. No. no. That's a five and a one. So I am gonna do 2d6 strength four hits at AP zero as we shoot a fireball. Ooh, an 11! No armor on those peasant archers over there, so threes kill them. That's 10, ten dead. dead. 10 just gets smoked right, by a fireball. There's only, uh, there's six left. So they're gonna immediately panic. Yes. Uh, they are leadership seven. Peasants are, peasant bowmen are better leadership than the fighting guys for some reason. Uh, there's no knights for them to use. Yeah, they have a rule called peasants duty, but it won't come into play here. Now I will say Steve is gonna panic because once a unit loses more than 25%, I say more because it used to be exactly 25%. These two guys are dead and the front rank is still alive and Oh no, we're fleeing. That's a 10. We're, oh, you don't have a battle standard bear on the table no. yet. No, so we're gonna boat face. So they turn directly away from Boop, and they run eight, and they, I think they run Let off the Let me measure table. that. We'll That's be... Effectively, only the front rank left, because the guys in the back These guys back. turn around and run right off the table. Yep. Eight, eight is enough to take them off the table. That was a massive fireball from that wizard. 
definitely more effective than Total War Warhammer's Fireball. <laughs> it's, it always uh, misses the mark. Steve doesn't play it as much, but anyone who does play the game will know. If there's a slight elevation on the battlefield, like a tiny little crest, not even a hill, like one step up, it's gonna hit that and explode and not hit the target. Oh, really? <laughs> if there's one tree in a field of emptiness, it'll hit that trunk and explode, and that's it, yeah. That's Fireball in that game, let me tell you. <laughs> that was a much better show of it. Two things to clarify there, we kind of jumped the gun a little bit. When a unit panics from uh, the shooting phase damage, it falls back in good order if it lost an, if it lost 50% or less than its guys that it started with in that phase. In this case, they had, what, 16? So hold on, I'll, I'll reword that even better. So because they had more, um, if they would have had more than half their models when they did the panic test, they would fall back in good order. But yes. because they were less than half, they yeah. fled. Yeah, there were 16 models there. If they lost eight, it would have been a fallback in good order. But nine or more is a break. They lost 10 there. And they would have faced away from the model that caused it. It went this way. Boom. And then they went eight, which does take them off the table. And when a unit, any part of the unit touches the edge of the table, they count as being destroyed and they're removed. But the problem is when a unit of, when a unit, of unit strength five or more is destroyed within six, six. inches, yep. it causes units to panic as well, which can cause a training reaction. Uh, they passed just. Because of him, yeah. Had they failed, though, they wouldn't have ran off the table, they just would have fell back in good order. A fall back in good order, exactly, yep. Just kind of, they're unwavered by what just happened beside them. You know, they do value their lives. <laughs> and that is about it for sure. I got the light of death, but I have no... Oh, yeah, you can do that yet! <laughs> I'll have to target them with it. So, yeah. it's bound power level three. Uh, that is an eight for a ten. Would you like to stop it? I'm gonna do a wizardly dispel. Boo! You get an eight plus three is eleven. 11. You stop it by one, which is exactly what you need. And that should bring us to our first combat of the game. Go to fighting. Uh, impact hits are resolved at initiative 10 now. Now, the impact hits are just a special rule units are going to have. You're going to want to look at the unit to see how many impact hits they do. They're different all over the place. Uh, and there are no size. You have to really purchase. This is more, again, for the veteran players. Side, the wheels are on heavy chariots now. And... Uh, these are not heavy chariots. Well, they're just chari light chariots, I yeah, guess. Light chariots. So they do impact hits D3, and size in give the impact hits armor penetration of two. So that's something good to know. Anyways, these are D3 per, and I'm going to get a grand total of seven. The impact hits are at the strength of the chariot, in this case, four. Strength four, so I need threes to wound. Uh, no AP. Oh, that was an amazing roll, though. No AP. So you have, I assume, just light armor. And shields. Oh, they got five up. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, you killed six of the five guys. Well, they are just absolutely run down by the chariot's impact hits. Pasted. Because I completely destroyed them in melee. Uh, it won't cause... They're too far away to panic. They are just going to reform uh, like this. Well, they're not going to bother reforming because they don't really need to. So I'll point will. out for you, Luca. Um, I have reasonable... I think I have reasonable charges of seeing both in here and then overrunning that way. I don't know if you want him... I don't know. Never mind. Sorry. It's a tight spot. Fair. This is a chance I screw up my positioning here a little bit because if Steve's right and he does blow right through them, then I won't have any way to assist the Ushabti, but... Well, movement is very powerful in the game, right? And when Luca had his whole army on the table, he's tripping up behind his own models. Oh, well, yeah, these are... 3,000-point uh, games a large game, too. So you can kind of see that in uh, as the evidence. You have, like, a lot of sacrificial pieces. You have pieces you just have to throw out there yeah. to try and uh, throw the enemy off. But Undead can't march, so they can't do that as well as other armies. Right, yeah, true. Uh, but he's going to reform that way. If they blow right through, I'm just going to go right for the hill. Or I'll reform some elements to chase them behind, but for the most part, I'll just keep moving towards the yeah, The hills, yeah, fair, fair, fair. Hills, extra victory points, which helps a lot. Oh, that's that's kind of it. Uh, there's, I'm not going to overrun. I'm just reforming. That's the end of my turn. We're on to turn two for the Bretonians. So start of turn sub phase, before the strategy phase, you have to roll for your ambushers to see if they show up. Normally you roll for every unit. Yes. But, but the special rule of this scenario is you roll once for the entire... Is my nuke going to show up and help out? No. Not yet. You hear the foot clops, but they're a little farther away than we like. Okay, that's interesting. So they might see them on turn three. Time to charge? Yeah. You have no strategy oh, phase I, things? I, I do not want to cast any spell. You might. That... You, you can get rid of my spectral steed, though, if you want to. Oh, I should get rid of that. Might as, well. you, might as well. Yeah. Uh, we'll do a Weasley Dispel on that. You are definitely in range. And nine. That's a nine. Off. It's cast of nine, so we got it there. So he does strip my ethereal. So it means he's a target for the trebuchet. With no spells to cast, what would you like to do for charging? I'm going to declare some charges. Um, I don't want to charge here, obviously. Oh, the hill? Yeah. The don't want to charge. Can't charge here, obviously. No. <sighs> so... I'm trying to decide. I'm, I'm charging with both these units for sure. Yeah. I was thinking maybe they both go here. 
I'm gonna kill those three chariots, overrun to those guys, fight them next turn with a charge. We're pretty good, but this guy will probably have arc to charge me. And that could be a big problem. It's because your your butt's gonna be open. Yeah, my far. butt will be yeah. very far. He'll be able to counter charge me. Yeah. Uh, but if I have these two units charging this unit, I'm gonna kill them, and then they're gonna charge once against that unit, I'm gonna kill them. But if I just put one unit here, kill them, over into that, I can pin them down. But, but then, then you, won't, to get you probably nervous. won't kill this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then these could flank you. Yeah. 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 So let's gonna charge one each. Do I want this? No, I want I want this guy on them. Okay. So we're gonna have the questing knights charge the scorpion, Boop. and the uh, knights of the realm charge the chariots. Boop. Well, I'm undead, so pretty pretty. I'm gonna double check. I'm gonna hold, but I, I might be able to stand and shoot. shoot. Maybe. Probably. But before your reactions, Luca. Okay. My paladin here. Wings over these guys is now, and they're gonna start charging the giant. Okay, okay. So they charging the chariots, they're charging here, and they're gonna charge the giant. The hope here is I kill the scorpion over under the giant. Get a free combat. And then fight again, because they're in <laughs> combat. And if not, if we don't kill the scorpion, they've just sent themselves to their own death. <laughs> you know what's bold though, I like it. Uh, undead can stand and shoot. Uh, it only check because that's the thing they haven't been able to do in the past, but the, because they're immune to psychology, they can't flee. That's the only option. Which makes sense. Why would the undead flee? Quick, quick, so quick. they are going to stand and shoot, and it's going to be six shots into the Knights of the Realm. Maybe I'll get lucky. The nice thing is stand and shoot does contribute to combat resolution. But we hit on fives because we always hit on fives. And we wound once. Oh, no. Three up. Oh, we're good. You're good. You pass it with the armor. All right, <laughs> let's do some charges. This charge almost really can't fail. So and then we're six plus D6. Oh, we're in. So that's uh, what, 20 inch charge? <laughs> uh, then they're gonna roll their charge. Now they have Bretonian War Horses. Uh, they reroll ones, they don't have any ones here. Adding an extra D6. Uh, I don't think I get to reroll ones on that, but let me double check. Now my understanding is I actually get to reroll this Steve from Swiss Stride, so we have that. All right, well, that means these guys add 12 to their charge of eight, so 20. They're gonna add nine, so they're gonna go 17. Yeah, and they're, uh, no need to really wheel or anything. They go straight forward, maximize on like the, that I area. Know, two of them, right? Yeah. yeah, kind of right there. And then these guys are just gonna go right into the tomb Ugh. scorpion. Boom, boom, boom. Good old oh. fancy lance formations. Guess they should roll their charge. Oh yeah. They do not reroll ones, but they're getting plenty. Yeah, they're also 18 inch charge into the side of him. The first guy makes contact, then they're all gonna try and get into his fighting rank as well. And uh, otherwise they'd go over there, yeah. That's how the skirmishers line up as they charge. Got that Lance charging the Scorpion. Let's do this fight. And them charging there. That's it, eh? Oh no, I guess we'll do some uh, other moves and shooting. Yeah, you should probably do, so that's, <laughs> that's charge moves done. If Steed, ha if Steed, if Steed, Steve had his reinforcements show up, he would have them come in now in the compulsory move phase. We're gonna skip that though, cause uh, they aren't here. They're, they've abandoned us apparently. We're gonna go to remaining moves and we're gonna show you where Steve ends up with his forces. I'll, I'll tell forces. you, nothing over there is gonna move. They're gonna turn left. Walk, turn forward. Okay, so they're gonna turn. Turning is a maneuver that they could do, uh, which means they'll turn to face 90 degrees or 180 degrees. Uh, they move a little bit, it takes some of their movement to turn, and then they can turn again. Effectively, they can move half, going backwards or sideways, which is in this case, two inches. I don't know if I run my archers up. If they wanna turn the same direction afterwards, otherwise they can keep their movement going. And the skirmishers moved a little bit as well, but not enough that they can't shoot. Hey, which is uh, the phase we're in, because all the moves are done. So, would you want to start over here with them? We're going to start with the trebuchet. Oh, the trebuchet, fair. Um, as much as I want to try to kill that Harrowfin from you, I need a direct hit to get you. Right. I'm not going to risk a direct hit. That's one six. Plus, it might not roll enough to kill him. Uh, he's got re he's got a better regeneration. He's got a ward I'm, save as I'm, well, which do stack. I'm going back for this giant, because when I, when I deviate, I'm going to hit something. Right. So, right to the middle of the giant. You know the template's on the top of his head, and where does it go? We get four off of him. It's gonna deviate four inches in that direction of the arrow. It's gonna actually land on the stalkers here. So it's in between both of them. They're not fully covered, so it's a four up hits for both of them, because they're weirdly big bases. Actually landing right between the two units there. Uh, so we have to see if they're hit on a four, see if he's hit on a four up. He's no. not, because he slithers out of the way. The other guy, no. he's hit. Yeah, sure, yes. So here's the interesting thing. Um, the, this hole is only over this guy's base. That's why I rolled <laughs> them separately. If this hole was over both their bases, um, I could have chose one model hit underneath a small hole to take the bigger hit. Yeah, one guy, one model is hit by the big rock. In this case, the big rock went for this guy, but he was able to dodge it. To dodge it because his base wasn't, well, their bases are never going to be under a template, right? Their yeah. bases are so big. So, it represents their agility moving out of the way. Yeah, only one strength five hit. That wounds. That does wound. I have Save no idea what one. Okay. Six up for heavy armor. 
Oh, nice. All right, we're good. The armor okay. just deflects the debris of the rock, landing right between them. And over to here, we got these archers. We're gonna go jump into the horse cab. Uh, we didn't move, hitting on fives. Oh, oh nice. Geez. That's a good cluster of hits right there. And fours. One! One. <laughs> they have uh, five up save for light armor shield and regeneration. Oh, one of them gets shot down by heavy cavalry, which actually I think they are heavy cavalry. That's a, it's a hit. Yeah, we almost forgot about the archers on this side of the table. We're gonna go fire at the other archers. No! <laughs> uh, fives for range. Oh yeah, I guess I'm not within half range. And fours. All right, three, three. wounds. They have no armor on them, but they do have regeneration. Oh, are they by any means dry as dust? I do have razors. Uh, I'm gonna double check. I'm pretty sure only the characters are like dry as dust. Uh, gotcha. There might be, there's a couple other things too, but it's. What that it's means odd. is um, One, my flaming attacks would negate regeneration if they were. Yeah, uh, no, dry as. It's a little different. Dry as dust is like an extra wound from flaming, from flaming attacks. Flammable and flaming attacks means I can't take regeneration saves. But most of the Tomb King stuff isn't flammable. So other nothing than is characters. flammable. Like characters are. Your characters are flammable and dry as dust. Some are some, some aren't. Oh, interesting. We'll yeah. find out when we yeah, can with a little them. bit of everything. You know, it's only the bows that are flaming. It's only the bows that are flaming, so you're fine. After that volley, we have two arches left, and we're good to go to combat. We definitely don't want to do them. We want to do them a little bit later. We want to resolve one of these two Let's first. Let's do this one. Right. Uh, fear won't come into play here because you outnumber me. My unit strength here is about 12. Yours is also 12. I'm 12. No, you're 9. 9. I'm Aren't sorry. You? I'm 9. You're 12. Yeah, that's, yeah, right. yeah, that's exactly it. The lance formation is very similar to a closed order formation, the fact that it gives a uh, plus one combo res all the time, but it allows all the models on the side, so everyone inclu excluding the guy in the middle rank there, to count as being in contact with my unit. So they get their full complement of attacks. Uh, in this case, just one, I assume. Yep. And uh, that's about it. It's just a different way of letting them get more attacks in with cap. Well, there, so um, not that it matters here. I have f uh, first charge, stuff like that, that's going to you know, disrupt your ranks. Right. So you're not going to get any rank bonuses. not going to matter. You don't have any. It's uh, a rule Bretonians have in their first round of combat if they charged. The first charge is a rule that the Knights of the Realm have. The first charge they make of the game will disrupt the enemy's ranks. So in this case, we got rid of that one for now, I suppose. And uh, I must go, I'm, yeah, must go three. These are veteran charioteers, effectively. All the guys on chariots are veteran warriors, so they're actual soldiers, I suppose. Strength five, you have to be tough as four. Yes. That means wounding on threes. Nice one. So we have three, and they're minus two because of the lances, and we charged. I don't think I have an armor. As I look at the chariots, I found out they're actually dry as dust, so uh, flammable attacks against them will do an additional damage. Like bows are in two damage just, uh, hit, a I wound. Get, they do have a higher toughness and a better save, but that is a damn good target for flaming yep. arrows. Next time, next time. They get regeneration, but they're not flammable, so they'll still have the regeneration save. It's a weird <laughs> one. It's a definitely, a, it's a three-way special rule triangle that's very odd. Anyways, I owe you some saves. That's three of them. Now, I only have a five-up armor save on them, so the AP of two will go right through their armor. Regeneration, none. That does break apart one of the chariots, which is the, just this one over here goes down. Because it's not the banner or the champion. Horses will have better initiative than I will. Two. Uh, they know four, so you're skill three. Yep, they're up skill three chariots. And five, you gotta get to, nah, I'm done. All right, and then I will fight you back uh, with what I have there. So luckily enough, the characteristics are similar enough. I can roll the four attacks from the charioteers and the four attacks from the skeletal horses at the same time. They're all hitting on fours. Ooh, only half hit, but that's pretty, actually that's average thing. And toughness three, I wound you on fours, three wounds. Ooh. And you have a three up save. I killed kill one. one. You have the, oh no, these are exiles. They don't, exiles, no they blessing. They have forsaken the lady. And they do not get the blessing of the lady to Hey, we can re-earn it. Oh, fair. Yeah, we okay. run you down, we can re-earn it. All right, let's uh, go to combat resolution here and find out how this works. So, Steve has killed three wounds worth of models. Boom, boom, boom. So you get one combat resolution for every wound you cause in the battle generally, and you have a banner, that'll be a combo res. You are in the lance formation, which is an other kind of combo resolution, so you get plus one there. And uh, it's very similar to closed order. I think that's it for your side. Mm -hmm. Now, I did one wound back to you. I have a banner in this combat, and I gotta check my formation. And they are open order, which is very similar to closed order, but the main difference, which actually took me a second to figure out, was that Open order units are more maneuverable in the uh -huh. movement phase, but they don't get the combat, the passive plus one combo as that closed order units get. So in this case, I'll lose combat by three. Which for the undead means crumbling because they're unbreakable, they never take break checks. In this case, uh, this is new for me, so it's gonna be a little tough to remember and I won't forget it and sometimes unbreakable units always give ground if they lose a combat. 
So I will get, well, okay. I have to do unstable first. Boop. And then this guy would just go back just a little bit. Just to do Shabti, and then they would follow up. I choose to follow up, yeah. Yeah, you would choose to follow up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Bam. That's just the whole giving ground mechanic. Unless I want to flee, but no. Yeah, no. In this case, the standard bear had to go down because I had a champion in the unit there left alive. Oh, and then we have this combat here to resolve where you get to definitely go first. And now you're going to go first with everyone because I'll beat you have great weapons. Always strikes last set your initiative to one. But Before you still, modifiers. But you still get to modify it with a charge rule. So for every one inch you charge, uh, up to three, you add that to your initiative. So in this case, they're initiative four. Great weapons against my initiative three. Everyone's attacking, but the dummy in the back there. Character first, because he's got the initiative. Yeah, Frontier Axe is strength plus two AP three. Oh, we're hitting on threes. Beautiful. Well, beautiful start. Uh, strength six, what's your toughness? Five. So threes to wound. Oh. I love it. It's AP three, my dude. Ooh. Burns right through his bone carapace, which counts as heavy armor. And you said AP three? Yes, sir. Yeah, so I got regeneration six. Every six I stop, Oh, nothing. He just, that's six damage, isn't it? Yes. Two um, damage per. I, yeah. Yep. So he just, just smashed to pieces by the frontier axe on that guy. Boom. We're going to overrun. Yes. Roll it up. Well, I don't, you can't really fail, but roll it up all the same. Overrun is just a pursuit move of 2d6, but because they have swift stride. Petronia, add the extra die. Oh, they're in. They're just going to go. Oh, there's a windmill in the way. Yeah. It's, oh, it doesn't, that doesn't move. Yeah. <laughs> like older editions, this counts as a charge move for all intents and purposes. And because we have not resolved this fight yet, you get to move along and fight again with them one more time. But you can only ever make one pursuit, move a turn, so you can't chain into multiple combats. You can get up to one additional combat, effectively. And that will bring us to that combat, I suspect. More there? Yes, sir. Same, same idea. I'm a low initiative. Uh, I got to double check his stats a little bit more, though. Hopefully his uh, better stats will keep him in the game here. Well, swinging again with that Frontier's Axe hitting on threes. Okay, we got a miss here. That's good. Uh, but you're talking to six. We're looking for fours this time. Ooh. Oh, got them both. AP three. Ah, right to his uh, regeneration. Ah, he fails them both. He takes four damage. He's got one wound left. Frontier's Axe is carving through my constructs here. We do have one, two, three more knights to No, actually, to they have to go next to the initiative. Oh, they got a higher initiative because uh, they have great weapons. Oh, they don't. you know what? Can I just double check one thing? Yeah. I believe I actually just earned something. Oh, nice. I so the lady saw what they did when they killed that Tomb Scorpion, and now they've regained her blessing. Is that their goal as an exile army, is to regain the lady's uh, wealth? It's every, it's, it's every Bretonian who's been like, of course, you lost your blessing, you have Fair to I'm, I'm sorry, I'm ignorant in, the, in, <laughs> in all of that. My bad, my bad. Uh, but yeah, so they're going to have their ward saved now, that unit in particular will. And my poor giant is down to one wound. We have to see what these yeomen get. Now, there's a new rule in the game called fighting rank. These two guys get to fight still with their uh, well, one attack, technically, but that's all they really have. You, you, you never get your full complement of attacks unless you're in base contact with the enemy, but you do get the support attack from the sides. I believe you're up skill three, so you hit me on fours. There's a champion. Oh my gosh, you're crushing me. <laughs> okay. Well, there's strength four? Yeah, so we need sixes. sixes. No, nah, okay, okay, fine. Okay, not bad. Uh, the horses uh, will be faster than my great weapons, so we're going to do all <laughs> those horses. Oh, because they charge, of course, yeah. yeah. And all of these horses, it's, no, because uh, it should be six and five, 11. Oh, 11, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fours. Okay. Sixes? Oh, that's enough Could to kill plot. him. It's a five up. No, does that get you? It might. Uh, it's going to be five up armor. Oh! oh okay. Heavy armor keeps him going. Uh, and then we have the questing knights with the great weapons. So we're now at initiative four. Yep. I'm initiative like one on him or something like that. So um, four, four attacks, five attacks is the champion who is not in base contact, but counts as being in base contact. As for the lance rule. For the lance rules. Uh, we're hitting on threes. Weapons go four. Nice. And these are strength four base, so four to wound. Sixes, their... sixes. Oh, four no, base. Great weapons. Great oh. weapons. Regens, uh, both of them. EP two, yeah. Oh, he's dead. Double six. No, he crumbles to dust. They can't overrun, but they can if they want to. No. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. We will not overrun then into those shabdi. Then you may reform. <laughs> well, this is a very bad. I kind of thought that I might have him in a risky situation. I'd lose a couple wounds, sure, whatever, kill a couple knights, but not. Buddy. Destroyed completely. And you, if you made one of those saves or whatever. I know. Just one I know. save. I need you to roll a little bit worse. I need you to roll a little bit worse. In our there. practice games, if I didn't have that Frontier's Axe, I never would have even tried that. Yeah. The Frontier's Axe. Well, it's just a good weapon. It's not like end all, be all, but it's just a, it's a good weapon. weapon. Yeah. yeah. Dang. This, uh, my right flank is in an immediate pickle here, but whatever. We'll keep going with it. They're all blocked up here, which is the bad part because of that. I was hoping that, uh, actually, I don't know what I was hoping, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder. Again, I might be fine. We'll see. Uh, that is it for combat. That is it for the turn. We are going to the third battle round of this mission, and uh, we are going to see what I can do. I have my strategy phase to do at least.
I've got quite a bit of important things to try to accomplish in my strategy phase here. My Nehekaran King, my Tomb King, is going to go with my Will Be Done Leadership 10. We got it with a 9. That's good. Uh, he's going to choose for my Tomb Guard to get D3 extra movement so they can charge further. We're going to get... Ah, oh, just one! No, we don't... Yeah. Still possible, but it's going to be a little bit harder. Movement five on them now. Uh, next, we're going to have our Lich Priest Hierophant cast a couple of spells. First one, we're going to try uh, Incantation of Desiccation. No, Curse Blades. Ba ba ba. We got a four plus eight. four is eight. Casting value of seven. It's good to go. Would you like to wizardly dispel? What does this do? This is the reroll heroes of one in eight. I think so, because you're going to get in. You're going to get in. So this is the time I want to stop it. We stop it. Eight plus three. Yeah, you do. No cursed blades, but we can do a couple other things. Uh, spectral steed up next. Looking for a nine with the modifiers. We do we got a ten. Make some ethereal fly. Uh, I want to try to stop that. I'll use wizard again. Uh, Ooh, you nine. Do. You do stop it. No spectral steed. Boop. And the last thing, spirit leech. I'm in range to do it now. It's 18 inch range. I'm going to target those yeoman. What do they call it? The human, human guard. guard. Boom. Oh, we miscast. Miscast. Womp, womp, womp. And the miscast is, we got seven. That's oh, that's not bad. Careless conjuration. He thought he knew what he was doing here, but I mispronounced the syllable. The spell has backfired, knocked him on his tush, and he takes a strength forehead if you would be so kind. Yeah. Uh, got him. That probably does wound him. He Wait. does have yeah. a five aboard save from the talisman of protection I bought him, and he's got regeneration, which you get to roll one after the other in this edition. Oh, he regenerates it. Nice. <laughs> nice. And then he just stands back up. But this, this spell fails. That'll be my last spell anyways. And then he can arise a unit. I'm going to choose the Tomb Guard. And we pass our leadership check, which is on, again, eight on him. I get to reanimate those two dead Tomb Guard. Ready for the command phase. On to charge declaration. All right, I've got a couple weird things to do here. I'm going to start with a couple of units over here. I just got to double check ranges, though. I have the War Sphinx declare a charge against the Skirmishers. He does cause terror, so they have to immediately do a leadership. Oh, what, what was like? Oh, we don't have to worry about that. They would have had to flee immediately, otherwise. No. He's charging there, and then the horses are going to declare a charge against them. Uh, that's it for my charges over here. We're going to declare a charge with the tomb guard into the human guard up on the barricade, which we're I. Hold. We're holding. Let's cause terror. No, I don't have any terror in that unit. And then we're going to try something new for the addition. I don't know if it's going to work out, but. Uh, this is only important for veterans, so if you're a new player, if, as long as you read the rules, you would understand how this works. But normally, you would never be able to charge through your own units. But there is a little bit of wiggle room in the new edition. If you are going to maneuver and your unit's going to pass through the corner of one of your own units, that's good to go. You're able to do that kind of stuff. But you can't move straight. You have to do the maneuver to get through them. So hypothetically, if I was to declare a charge with this unit into the questing knights, and the wheel maneuver would completely clear my base and I'm able to charge them, then that's legal. But if I can't clear it with the wheel, then it's it's failed. It's all good. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna declare a charge against the questing knights. Hold. Hold. I'm gonna get ahead of everybody because there's, there's every time we do something like this, there's always like one or two commenters saying, ah, it doesn't look like that would have made it. We had multiple people in the room, a lot of measurements, making sure everything is legit here. <laughs> I still need to roll high on my charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, he yeah. has the move. He has the move to do it. The, the the space to fit. Yeah, this back corner has to wheel up to. It's pretty nasty. It's a pretty bad wheel. But like, if we roll high enough, we can make it. So that's the charge there. And then you're just gonna hold here, hold, hold up there, and then oh, those both. Holding, are... I'll, I'll, I'll um, stand and shoot. Oh, that works too. We'll resolve the stand and shoot then. Minus one for stand and shoot. Boop, boop, boop. So five. Five's got three hits. Six. Do, do you have any like multiple things to hit? No, just the how does different for melee. Take that one. One wound, strength three, and toughness. I think they're only T6 now. That's going to be heavy armor. The charge here does not have swift stride, but it is uh, movement six. So it's going to charge 12. Oh, you made it. What did I need? You needed a five on the high die. Oh, nice. It means I won't be able to wheel much because uh, I only had like an inch of leeway. So they're all going to form up on him as I knock my models. And skirmish up like that. And then the Cav. I don't know if I like their charge, but I'll give it a shot. They move eight. Uh, they charge. Take the two and Swift Stride. Another you, two. <laughs> you, you just made it. We made it. Uh, okay, that is a 12-inch charge. You go forward. You're going to wheel to a line. Go all the way here and then close the door. Yeah, that's about the two. Ah, <laughs> what a monster. <laughs> and moving on to the nonsense on this side of the board. I have to look at the movement of Ushabti. You oh, yeah, this five? one here. I move five. Two inches. But the terrain slows me down. So four? It makes my movement one less, and I take the lower die when I charge. Ooh! Because uh, it's um, difficult terrain, uh, the defensive wall there. So let's see. Uh, the low die is a one. 
and uh, I move five, so I fail. <laughs> Scratch that. In fact, because Steve is defending the wall, which is a good thing, I don't technically have to cross the wall, so I don't take the difficult terrain penalty for charging. So I do use the six, and I keep my movement of five, uh, but I charge the wall instead. But it counts as a disordered charge because I'm defending the wall. Good luck. That's a heavy unit. <laughs> oh, no. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Boom. We'll charge straight into the wall. We're fighting over a defended wall, and it counts as a disordered charge because you're defending it. And with that result, we move on to this nonsense over here. Uh, declaring a charge against them. I have to see what their movement characteristic is, but this is what their charge is gonna be. Oh, two, jeez, that's a fail. My gosh, if I had rolled a three up, I would have made that. So the, I'll show you where the seven inch wheel takes, well, a seven inch move doing the full wheel takes them. That is my seven inch charge. I did not make contact with oh, the yeah, enemy, yeah. but I was <laughs> able to wheel past the, the uh, chariot. But that's what I get for not rolling well. So they're just gonna go right back there where they were and count as a fail charge. Back to sadness. Okay, well, uh, remaining moves for me. It's uh, a good question. I had forgotten that Spectral Steed is a conveyance spell, but I'll just keep the same rules we did because it doesn't change much where Steve dispelled it. But as a clarification, I should have cast the spell in this phase, not earlier. He feels so naked without his ghost horse. He doesn't, <laughs> he's so slow. He's gonna go boop. <laughs> and maybe he'll just go shoot a fireball that way. It worked, no. out. It worked out well no. last time. I think the rest of my stuff's going to start moving that way. So I'm going to move them that way. i got to figure out what I want to do with them, but I'll be back in a second because this is pretty much it that's moving. Skeletons wheeled four inches. They can't slow. <laughs> Very slow. <laughs> uh, these two lumbering monstrosities essentially moved this direction. You have to pay for the wheels and all that stuff now uh, as they have the lumbering rule. You'll figure that all out later. But they do get to do a 90 degree pivot afterwards. So they moved this way and then pivoted to face this direction. And then the sepulchral stalker simply did a reform. They can hear us. We think there's someone coming. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, that's it for moving, I think. And uh, we're gonna go right to shooting. We're gonna keep it simple. We're gonna start with him. He's gonna conjure up the Ruby Ring of Ruin. And we're gonna shoot it at those archers. It's bound two, so I get a nine. I'll stop with the wizard or attempt to. You oh, do? Yeah, stop. Not, no Ruby Ring of Ruin. Not twice. Can you check to see if I'm within 15? He's gonna conjure some unquiet spirits to harass the archers over there. Casting value of eight, we got it with a nine. Okay, we'll try again with a wizard leading spell. Yes. Well, she's doing work today. She is. Earning her pay. Uh, and the last one is nothing. That's it, he's had two magic missiles. Okay, well, he's done. And uh, shooting, these two archers are gonna fire shots at them, cause why not? Fives to hit, whoa, loose, and a wound. I have no armor. <laughs> All right, he eats it. That reminds me, these guys were going to just reform in the movement oh, yeah, phase. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're going to do something kind of cool here. They're going to do a turn maneuver, which is a quarter of their movement, and uh, they're going to just move that way. But they're in difficult terrain, so they're... they're... Oh, that's uh, for charging, I think. Let me double check. In this case, it's only a two-inch move. It's a quarter of their movement characteristic to turn, and then it's minus one of the movement characteristic to uh, move while in difficult terrain. So they only... they turned, but... It's kind of cool because all the command goes to the front facing anyways. And when you have a perfect square unit, five by five, six by six, the turn is very simple to resolve. And they move two, so just to help out this flank, because this is obviously, this is a monstrosity over here. Back to shooting. This bad boy over here is eligible to shoot now. And I think we're gonna go put it on your <laughs> war machine. We're just gonna aim it right for the middle of your trebuchet. Beam right over top of them. Six inch scatter. Doop, doop. Boop, boop, boop. Rock is gonna land in the woods. There's trees out of the game. Boop, boop, boom. Not really, but you can do stuff like that if you want to. Should conclude shooting, so we can go right to combat. We'll start over here, and we'll work our way over. Uh, double check all the initiatives and everything over here. I believe I would go first. Doom Guard are equipped with Cav Spears. are going to choose to use at this combat. They have hand weapons as well. That's uh, more if I get charged. They are going to hit on... Your weapon's got two? Ooh, those are might... Nah, they're going to be two. I'm not going to look out. They're two. Got our three. So we hit on threes. They're strength five because of the Cav Spears. Uh, three wounds, minus one. <laughs> and then the War Sphinx will be initiative four after charging. You can buy the uh, Stinger weapon on this guy because his tail is not equipped with the Stinger. Uh, it's a cool thing you can buy him though. It's a poison attack that is uh, initiative 10. One of his attacks is poison. So you can kind of like kill a model in base contact before anyone else gets to fight. Neat little upgrade. It's only five points, so it's probably worth it. Oh, let's say you have it then. I don't know. The model bothers me too much. It doesn't have it. WYSIWYG. Fine, fine, you gotta have the pointy fine. tail. Four regular attacks. Which hit on threes, and he's going to go four. Twos, I believe. Kills Roll two nice. of them. Yeah. Uh, and then, how many did I kill? You killed four. That's my. No, you killed five. 
I killed five? Yep. Also, the rest all step up and they can't fight, but I give my stomps on you. D3 stomp attacks for two and twos. Kills two additional ones. Boom, Those are three more command models. Oh, nice. We got three dudes left. Oh, nice. You actually do have this <laughs> literally the command. Oh, actually, no, I'm going to have my champion. Oh, you know, yeah, the champion. I didn't you die. have one yep. attack. Yep, champion can still attack because he's. Uh, he hits. You always have to target the champions. No, All right. no, <laughs> right, that's fair. All right, so break check. Cause Terra and I want a combat which reduces the enemy's leadership by one, which is a new thing for Terra. It's a nice thing. You no longer do the start of turn, terror, charging a terror unit. That's a little different. Uh, you, you won by six. Uh, yeah, I won by quite a bit, yeah. So your leadership down to essentially double ones. Uh, but we'll see. So you roll a six. You know what's funny? What? We're, 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 we're holding. We're going to fall back in good order. So the unit strength of the Cameron War Sphinx is actually only five. That was six. But six wouldn't matter either because you have to actually have more than double their unit strength. Now, if you lost one more model, you would have broke because you would have had two to my five. That's more than double. Uh, you lost by a bunch. So, but you rolled within your leadership. Their leadership seven down to six because of the terror rule. And you rolled within it. Uh, you don't give ground, you fall back in good order. But you I don't do break. point out that these do have their leadership than them, yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, we're going to go five inches back. And I'm going to try to restrain. You don't want to come up? Oh, you got to no. come up. I failed. I'm, I'm pursuing. So you go 2d6 and you come straight in. Eight. And then you, yeah, because you automatically, re so falling back in good order is you take the high, you flee, but you remove the low die. So you go five and then you automatically rally and reform. And then I can restrain or pursue. In this case, I had to pursue because I failed my leadership check. And I'm going uh, to go right into him. And for you veteran players, if I had rolled higher than my leadership, which was seven or six because of terror, I, that, I, that roll I would have did would have been both 2d6. I would have ran off the table. You, that would have been a proper break. And not automatically reforming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Proper break. And that's yeah. about it for there. And then we got this combat I'm not in love with to resolve. But we'll figure it out. I have to, He's going to opt to fight with his spears instead of hand weapons. And have pole arms. So it's going to be halberds or spears. Oh, they have pole arms. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Oh. Use them as halberds two-handed or yep. fight as a spear. That's neat. I like that. I'll use my spears against you. All right. Well, I will attack you with my horsies. Well, my riders and the horsies. Got four guys attacking in the front and then my champion. Our champions are base contact, so let's have my champion attack your champion. Hey! I miss. Beautiful. And then these are into your unit. Hey! I hit three times. Threes to wound at minus one. Ooh, three of them. Minus one. Sixes. We need sixes. Okay. Ooh, I crush three of them in the front and then I get my horses. I'll do four horse attacks. We hit twice, we wound neither time, and then my horse into your champion. Nah, misses. And I killed, th uh, do you get to fight in extra ranks? Yes. Okay, so I only so, killed three. Yes, I'm gonna have uh, five attacks in second rank, uh, three in the front rank is the champion. Correct. I'm gonna put one attack into your champion. Okay. Misses, and the rest are into your horses. Ooh. I mean, your cav. Cav. Horse Four hit, horse. we're the same poopy weapon skill. One. One, excellent. Ah, no AP on your side. Uh, that's a failed armor save and regeneration. Oh, oh that's a big deal. Oh, Combat nope. resolution. I killed three guys. I have a rank because I'm heavy cavalry. You are, and that's what yeah, you're saying. Weirdly, you they're heavy cavalry. <laughs> I have a banner. Heavy cavalry counts four as a rank instead of five. Um, and that's it, right? So killed three, rank, and a banner. I have oh. two ranks and a banner. I might be closed order. I got to double check that. Closed order. So an additional plus one combat resolution. You, however, have two ranks. A banner and closed order, and you do get one combat res regeneration. Even though I passed the regen, it still counts towards combat resolution. So I think I went by one. Yes. Now, I have leadership six on my champion. Yep. But I have the war band special rule, so he's leadership a, a plus one per rank. That's so like the old strength in numbers. Yeah. Yeah. Leadership eight effectively. All right. Fine. Leadership eight. But I lost by one. Boo boo boo! You are. Oh, didn't matter. Giving ones. ground. <laughs> You're giving ground. All right. So we are going to just fall. We're going to pursue. Why not? We'll just go like that. I got the cavalry spear support now, which will help a little bit. Maybe prolonged combat will be good for me. Probably not, but they've already done better than I thought they would. <laughs> uh, we're going to do the big combat last, and we're going to resolve this poor chariot fight over here against the uh, Knights of the Realm. What's your initiative? Not great. Only initiative two. So my weapons on my riders are hitting on threes. Nice. Uh, but they're rooting on fives. Uh, oh, two. Excellent. So the lances aren't doing so good here. I make one light armor save and I got the regeneration, which I failed. So we take a damage so far. And we got horsies. Is going to be fours and also, fi Ooh, also fives. One more. One more. I've taken the damage so far. Light armor, shield. Well, five up save effectively. Regen, two damage. We got one wound left on him. I have five attacks back because that's where the master charioteer is. I hit you on fours and wound you on fours. Oh, three of them. Oh, jeez. Okay. All right. Three up. 
I no, killed two. My knights. And they don't have the blessing. But I got one wound left over here. So that was a surprising combat overall. You definitely win this one, but I got two uh, for combat res. Uh, <laughs> I think that's it. Uh, you have two back, and you have a banner and lance formation, so we're gonna crumble two. Boom, 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 boom. As their open order. And that hot mess is all resolved. Okay. I'll that, save that. Oh, he just wants to say like that, yeah. I'm going after the big guys. And then we will go ahead and fight up here. Uh, it's a disordered charge, so I don't get my initiative bonus to charging. Would you like to issue a challenge? Uh, no, not really. Cecil would. <gasps> Cecil! Well, I do have a Tomb King in there. He's two damage a swing. Oh, it's fair. You know what? I feel like most Tomb Kings are bold, so he'll answer the challenge of Mr. Cecil here. So we've got Cecil over here and the Tomb King over there. Now it is a little vague on uh, the placement of the characters. It just says move them into a position where they'd be across from one another. That's not. And then it says it's not always practical, so you don't have to do it. But in this case, I don't think it screws up too much by moving the Tomb King over that way. I will, as I charge in, Cecil points towards him and issues the challenge, and the Tomb King just kind of makes his way through the ranks and uh, goes to fight Cecil over here. Otherwise, uh, I pretty much go after you everywhere because of the disorder charge. I don't get the initiative bonus uh, for the charge oh, here. Yeah. yeah. Now, the unique thing to the scenario is that spiky wall we have up there is to represent the, the spikes in the ground over here, which have a very similar rule. It counts as a disordered charge charging into them, and my unit is disrupted, which means I won't get my rank bonuses. So we're trying to brute force our way through this. Uh, we might as well go on to this fight where whatever your initiatives are, you'll probably go first because my Tomb Guard are like three. I don't know what the Herald is, but the King has a great weapon. All right, Cecil is going to go first with Sorrow's End, his magical sword, into the Tomb King. Uh, your weapon skill seven on Mr. Cecil? I am. He's a fighter. You hit me on threes. Now, I do have the glittering scales. I can make you reroll a successful hit roll once per combat. That one? Yeah, just for... It didn't help. Okay. Much better than what it used to be, that's for sure. What strength are you? He is strength four. The sword's plus one, so five? Uh, should be forced to wound me. One, Only one. One wounding hit. If the Tomb King can regenerate it... No, he's got a five up regen, though. Is that two damage? It's two damage. All right, he's still alive with a couple wounds. Now the Herald does have a rule called Sworn Protector, though I, that is not involving challenges though. I think it's if anyone's trying to get sneaky hits on him before a challenge or not in a challenge, the, the Herald jumps in the way. Bishop three on everyone else, so might as well go ahead and see what these men at arms can do and the wizard. Is everything to my yeah, unit? Yeah, I'm gonna use spears. Okay. And we're gonna dump everything into the unit. Uh, this is the wizard as well. She's effectively the same stats. We're looking for fours. Fours to hit, fives to wound. That is nothing. nothing. Attack at initiative three, this tomb guard and the herald are gonna try and kill the wizard, whereas the rest are gonna attack the unit. Then the king afterwards will try and take out Cecil. So with the herald trying to cut up the sorceress there, or the wizard, which is what skill two three. or three? Yeah. Threes to hit, got a couple hits. Uh, toughness three. Oh yeah. One wound. That's Minus. one left. All right, fair. <laughs> and then I got the tomb guard beside him, trying it out, just one attack on him. Ooh, web skill three. Yeah. Oh, we missed then. It means we have four attacks with the other two guard. You're up skill three on your guys, so unfortunately one hit. But wound at minus one because they have copeshes. Six up then. No. Nope. I kill. I do two wounds. You do two wounds. But I get to see what my king can do to Cecil. He does have a great weapon, so he's got some potential here. Uh, three fours to hit. Oh, two hits and twos to wound. Uh, these are both minus two, I believe. Oh, the six of save on Cecil. Two damage on Cecil. He's done a one. Oh, that's a tight one. <laughs> Because I'm disrupted, the combat res isn't going to be super great for me, but we'll see. I did three damage to you? Yeah. One on the wizard, two on Cecil. I got two kinds of banners, and I am closed order. Boom. You did two damage to me. You have a banner, and you got three ranks. I Which assume. I can claim because I'm Horde. Oh, yes. Because two's right. the max normal. Two is, yeah, that's right. I should have said that. You can only really claim up to two rank bonuses. However, if you have the Horde rule, you can go up one more above that. And uh, that is about it. Now, I can't remember if I did your closed order or not. So if you did, I would lose combat, but I'm indomitable and I have the battle standard bear, so it reduces the amount of crumble by two or D3, whatever I roll higher on the BSB or the, sorry. I don't crumble. <laughs> Long story short, I'm not <laughs> You gonna don't crumble. crumble. We're gonna hold just like that. So nobody's backing up. That's true, no, well, I give ground first. Interesting, because I have to give ground if I lose. I'm just double checking the combat res. Steve does end up winning that one by one, so I will have to give ground. Boo, boo, boo. And would you? I will like... not. I will stay behind my fence bravely. Do me a leadership, anyways. Oh, yeah, that's right. Nine. We're good. Sir Cecil is nine or ten. 
a unique scenario where pretty much all of our characters took damage, except uh, the units themselves. So, <laughs> I guess it is what it is. That'll end my third turn, though. We're going to see what Steve's turn Should looks like. Should I go back like. in? And do the reserves show up, sir? Oh, jeez. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, hey, I think far, sorry. <laughs> well, at least we get some more action this way and get to see the uh, enemy nice show. So Steve's reinforcements will be showing up in the compulsory move phase. Uh, well, nothing to do in the strategy phase, so right to remaining moves and charges and stuff. So remaining, no, compulsory oh, first. Sorry. No, no, charges first. Oh, yeah. charges first, yeah, sorry, charge, charge. Yeah. You yeah. know what? They're bold and emboldened, right? Charge as well. Yeah, so all three of them, they're going to hold because they're undead. And, I'm uh, not charging here. You don't want to leave the... Fence's friend. Fence's greatest friend when you have no knights around. Yeah, exactly. And then uh, that's, we just do the charge move, so they're just going to all come on in here. So, guys, no matter what, if I roll double, if I roll three ones, three ones, three ones, they're all making it in no yeah, matter what. Yeah, there's no reason to so roll So I'm not going to roll it. Oh, bye-bye. Charging in like that. Uh, that's it, I guess, right? I am going to move these guys. Oh, as they lose their spikes? They're going to they lose, lose their spikes. Oh, I didn't know that. Interesting. If they move for... We are attempting a march, so we have to see... They are able to march. <laughs> <That's what she said. laughs> Excellent. All right, they are just doing a full march to assist Cecil and his unit for later. Otherwise, that's... We hear, we hear trumpets in the distance. We hear trumpets. We're going to do the compulsory moves. Now, the important thing to remember for this scenario, none of these guys are actually ambushers, which means they don't have to worry about being more than eight away from the enemy, which is part of the ambushing special rule. They just come in as reserves. We're going to show you where these brave, brave Bretonians come on in. Here's one of the units. And they have arrived. Now, when they come into reserves, they obviously can't charge because we're past that phase of the game. And they can't march either, but they're able to do normal moves. We have, now, I'm not too sure which are Grail, which are our actual, uh, these are Grail Knights. Yep. These are Knights of the Realm. Look at, look at their heads. The head, the heads, the heads, uh, the heads, they're the same. They're all the same heads. No, they're not. They, they all got have fancy different... helmets. They got fancier helmets, I guess. We have the Paladin with the Battle Standard Bearer. Okay, we then... have golden helmets for Paladins. Okay. Or, or Grail Knights. The, uh, Ador the crazy helmets for the Knights of the Realm. And the children don't get anything. Ah, uh, Knights Errant. Yeah. I see. I understand. This is Lady Elise? Yes, that's Lady Elise. That's the main character from the Arcane Journal. And then we have uh, the Battle Standard Bear on a Pegasus. Big Pegasus. Uh, and then over here, we got ourselves our Bretonian Jet Duke. That's my Duke. And then we have the Battle Pilgrims over here yeah. ready to assault all this. So long as they're near somebody with a Grail Virtue, they have the Blessing of the Lady. Oh, they got to stay near them? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that is it for compulsory moves. We're good to go to remaining moves, which will pretty much just be this stuff. Yeah. Technically, we wouldn't have moved yeah. the archers, but that doesn't change too much. The archer moving now, and then we'll show you where this all ends up because it just does normal moves. All, right. all of the cavalry moving forward. We're keeping them an equal distance away from the sepulchral stalkers so that I have to charge both of them if I want to charge. And then... Hmm. Ooh, never mind, Normie, for multiple reasons I can't counter charge. Oh, yeah, we're double-checking the counter charge <laughs> For thing. multiple yeah, reasons. Yeah. Uh, if it's too close, you can't do it. And that's, that's I can't me. because you're a unit type as well. Oh, am I not the right type? No, you're not. Never mind Lucas Cavalry. I could do it if I was farther away. <laughs> right. Monsters Cavalry no, doesn't Monsters Cavalry, well, ca mo is, that's, the, that's the question. Oh, no, they ca they, no, these guys are Cav. Yeah, yeah, they're Cavalry. They count as Cavalry? Monsters Cavalry is still Cavalry. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I can counter charge if I was... Far enough away. How, how, how much movement are you? I think there's seven. So if I was uh, se more than seven inches away, I could counter charge. Yeah, which but, is good for Bretonia. Yeah, yeah. It's like that's that sweet spot you want to be. Like, so outside. I was actually thinking I was going to counter charge from one inch away. That's why I moved in like this. Oh, but no matter where you are. You, but that, don't, yeah. I'll be fine. I'll figure it out. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, because you could only be like another three inches back. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't yeah, matter Yeah, I couldn't get much. far enough away. Uh, okay, well, and then... We're on shooting. Yeah, the battle pilgrims moved right up to this guy just to make sure I can't get any shenanigans on the duke. And uh, right to shooting. We got well, a wizard. We might as well go ahead and uh, trebuchet that. Uh, trip, that uh, stone oh, thrower. my stone thrower. Yep. Bring it on. Uh, Direct hit. hit. Uh oh. A little bit of a mistake earlier we made against them. There is a rule that any model directly or partially underneath the middle hole there is automatically hit as well. So when we had it like between the two of them, they both would have been hit. Uh, I don't I rolled a one to wound. Yeah, that we'll, just say, that we'll just say that. Yeah, Steve rolled the one to wound off camera. Oops. <laughs> now, it's, we brought it up because we thought, oh, well, technically the stone thrower is not completely under the template. It's so far up to hit him. But no, there is a rule that if a model is partially under the hole, it is automatically hit. So two to wound. Boom. Yes, D3 plus one damage. Minimum two. Uh, you yeah, two crew left. Yeah, he, the, the trebuchet hasn't been hit. Not the, sorry, the, the screaming skull hasn't been hit yet. Two, three damage? Three damage. He's dead. That kills him. Um, so 
War Machines are kind of cool. They have two different wound pools of three generally. Three wounds on the crew. If they're destroyed, the War Machine's destroyed. Or if the War Machine's destroyed, the crew die as well. It's just two different ways you can kill a War Machine. And in this case, that was an easy enough way of doing it. And we're going to attempt to conjure a Doom Bolt from the Sorceress. I don't think there's any point in Doom Bolting them, right? They're just going to heal it. Fair. Ah, you know what? You fill the leadership. Let's Doom Bolt them. Uh, it's a nine. I'll try and stop it with a wizardly dispel. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this wizard sucks. Okay. Uh, uh, we'll figure that out. Well, the math on that, that's two automatic hits and ten maybe. Oh, jeez, another really good roll. And uh, then we're going to put the this many hits there. in. Yep. And these are strength. Three AP two, so we need fives. We kill four models. I got regen. Oh. They stand back up. Two of them do. Nice. And these two die to the Doom Bolt. He's going to attempt a wind blast. Lady Elise over there. Oh, I can't see you. Wait, you're large shark. Yes, I can. Yeah, you can see over other models. Wind blast. We got it. Oh, nice. I guess. She's uh, only level three as well. This is my faded dispel here because I don't, I'm too far away for a wizardly dispel and she's got nothing else to cast. So, no. <laughs> okay. Wind blast. This, this is going to be D3 plus three. Strength five attacks. Ooh. I mean, five hits. Sorry, this, five hits. This could blow them to pieces. Strength five. Strong enough gust. Number fives. That is two. Two. Two wounds at AP one. Six up save. <gasps> he, might, he might fall apart. Oh, he oh, does. He Wind just knock him to pieces and blow him away. I was very unfortunate for my giants. <laughs> We're on to fighting, which is, he wants to do this one over here. The paladin. The paladin. Three's to hit. Aww. Does he have four attacks? He does. Okay, yeah. I maybe mean, taking guess that. There's only three yeah, attacks. Yeah, sorry, she's four attacks. We'll just roll, we roll three of them. Uh, two oh, hits. Same thing. And he's strength six. So that mm. should wound you both times? I believe. P3 goes right through. Uh, regeneration. Ah, not making another one. Two damage each. Uh, so he'll kill one. Kill this guy there, but I'll remove uh, this guy for the ease of that. I'll just put him over here. Just we right got over here. spears next. Spears. Uh, actually, I wonder if I owe you fear. Uh, fear checks all around here because uh, it's like you compare yours to mine. Not all of it involved. That's a good thing, I suppose. Them are good. Yep. Uh, they I are think... they are they seven? Or are they? I don't know what the archers are. They're, oh, but night, that's right. Peasant's duty. Peasant's duty. Yeah. Uh, they're they have the veteran rule. So we're gonna re-roll this. Nope, they're good. No good. failed fears. Right, so we had took. two hits with these spears. All right, roll them up to wound. Uh, four's the wound. One, one. Of them. maybe one. Six. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. And Excellent. we have these lances. Excellent. Which weapon skill? Let's go four. Only two, two, hits, two hits then. Two hits. Uh, three's the wound. One, one more. Maybe two. Right through their armor. Regeneration. No one damage. The wound is there, and you should have your horses. Yep. And horses. Fours. Fives? Three. Oh, scary. Three of them. Oh, man, should have done these uh, separately. Uh, you, have, you have to know where these come from. That's okay. Uh, that guy, I don't, doesn't really matter. We take one. Hopefully, I make a regen. <gasps> ah. We'll worry about that later. This guy's dead. That's two more wounds. Uh, and then we have the great weapons. So straight weapons. Threes to hit. Let's go five. There's, uh, and twos to wound. Four more to AP, two. Four regens. I regen. None of them. One more guy dies. Boom, boom, boom. Three of them are dead. Uh, for the ease of all of this, I know that this unit killed two of them on their own. So that means two, these two can't fight because they died there. These guys did a wound over here, and then all the horses combined did two more damage. So say that that one died. So no fighting that way. So this guy up here could still strike these knights with his um, ritual blade. Nobody did attacks, yeah. Yeah, nobody did attacks in the Ancient, so technically the Ancient would attack, so uh, I'll just put his attacks. It's all the same. Anyway, I want to go. They well, have a ward save now, though, so. I'll attack these guys. Yeah. <laughs> Hi. Ooh. Nice. Twos. Uh, minus three. Uh, Four, six up saves on them. Yikes. Let's see what we got here. They're all uh, <laughs> That one Ancient killed all three of them on his own. Plus three Ushabti. Oh, well, plus one, so that's ten wounds. So he's got ten wounds. Uh, he has a flank. Uh, one lance formation, boop, and a banner, boom, and then no rank, but that's okay. I did what three damage back, and I think I'm closed order. Not quite much I could do about that, so I'm gonna be crumbling by. I'd give ground chirp, boom, boom, boom. I'd technically go one, two, and then I start crumbling. Uh, I do that because there's two units there, and uh, I, I only have eight wounds here, and I crumble nine. I'm in dominoes, so I only crumble eight, but they exactly die. Whoosh. Close. They're reforming to face me this way. And then we have fights way on this side of the battlefield. And then this fight. Oh, we'll just do this fight over here. I have initiative three. So is my tomb guard. So they'll go. So you'll go. That doesn't change too much. I uh, enough fours. Couple hits. And 
No. Nope. Carry on. <laughs> I will. I hit you. Your web skill two? Yes, sir. Two hits. <laughs> two wounds. Uh, no AP, though. So oh, these yeah, two no. are dead. Yep. He'll slide over in a second, but. Sphinx. Hey, web skill four and twos. He did. Boom. I'm going to oh. reform off that. I'm going to turn to face these pilgrims and duke upcoming. And this fight over here. Uh, ooh, I'm initiative, not great. This is not great. You're gonna go first, and you have about 11 attacks because of the champion. Any attacks into my champion? Just one? Yeah, but one of yours. My champion! Uh, fours and fours. Okay. Okay, and the unit. Okay. <laughs> fours to wound. One. one. Light armor, regeneration. That does prevent one of my guys attacking. Hey, that's a two point swing. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, what am I trying to do here? I'll take that guy. They kind of slide over, but that's okay. Now, Cav Spears give supporting attacks as well, which is nice. So I'll get those three attacks from the back. And uh, that one guy can't attack. Do my champion into your champion, and then I'll do all the other attacks. Fully? The unit. Yeah, fully. Including his horse, uh, which are all obstacle too. And two hits. Uh, one wound. Buddy, you can't. Armor five. Ah, I'm got a champion. The champion's dead. No more leadership for you. I'll get. Four, I'll get six more attacks from the skeletons and then three more horses in the front rank and fight. You can't support attack from the horses in the back. These are fours. Nice. nice. <laughs> and fours. One. Nice. Another one. Got one. I forgot the fear check there. That's okay. Uh, for combat res, I did two damage to you. I have a banner and I am closed. You did a damage to me. You have two ranks and a banner and are closed. I'm closed. I crumble one. I give ground though. Boom. He's of course going to follow up. He doesn't want me charging for free with my cav. That will end battle round three of six. We're going to go to the Tomb King's turn four. Lots of action. This has got a lot of action, a lot of game to play here still. I want to resolve this. I'm going to see how this goes. I'm, I might be too afraid to accept that challenge again, though. <laughs> but then again, my Tomb you're, King's you're, in a position I'm, to get it. I'm not going to issue a challenge. Oh, I, I want to cut you down as you walk up. That's a smart way of doing it. If too. you should challenge elsewhere, like somebody else will take it. Yeah, I might just hold. I might be. Oh, I, I might be able to heal him actually. No. Well, we are officially halfway done the game, and we are going to start this off with an arise over here. Arise. To see if I can heal my unit up and then go right back in there and fight good old Sir Cecil. Now, arise. Uh, targets the unit, and the interesting thing is it actually heals the characters in the units first, then brings back the rank and file models, starting with like the champion, the banner. You do to fail, you do to fail. Yeah. Hey, -ya! we pass. Dang. Lucia Bait. <laughs> yeah. It's a pretty good ability, and a like I'm curious to play a game with a lot of Lich Priests to see what that kind of looks like. Maybe not a lot, maybe two or three, but I think they can all do it. The other option is the kings can just take the crown, but they can only affect the. They they're not like. Skilled enough to use it on the tomb guard or something. They can only use it on like the little guys. They're playing the crown has a, a light level of healing on regular skeletons. Yeah, it's uh, and skilled to horsemen as well. Horsemen as well, yes. But that requires to bring cavalry. It's okay. <laughs> I wanted to try them out a little bit. I'm not a cab player. Though. I don't know how to use it. Look, I just brute forced my way into the pro in front of an infantry brick. Cav is hard. Luke is not smart enough to use cavalry. Uh, they're going to heal D3 plus wizard level of wounds. So six oh. wounds. Seven wounds because he's level four. So that guy's going to heal two and those two tomb guard come back. This helps the tomb king out a little bit, but it's going to be a little risky against Cecil there. Um, ba 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 ba. My will be done. Another defensive thing for the Tomb King here. Instead of adding movement, we're gonna add weapon skill to the unit to make us with the same weapon skill. So it's a more of an even fight. Uh, Lucia 10. We pass. So the unit goes to weapon skill 4, and the King goes to weapon skill 7. No! Yeah. We're gonna try and cast our first enchantment Cursed Blades on the Lich Priest. Cast on a 7. That's good enough. I might as well try. Yeah, wizardly dispel. No! Oh, no, you got it. We got Curse Blades off. That's that little aura of eight inches of uh, Rural Natural Heroes 1. And we're going to attempt Spirit Leech on Sir Cecil's unit. Hey, this is, oh, that's a fail. I was going to say it's cast on an eight. Ah, it is off by one. And we're going to show off something new for the Casket of Souls. Oh, sorry, by the way, I should note the Casket of Souls still has some capability of assisting your wizards, but they have to be kind of close together. Uh, it gives them a, a further plus one bonus to their casting rolls in addition to their wizard level, but only for wizards. It doesn't count himself. Forget it's 12 inches. I thought it was six. I am still too far away, but I could have I could have uh, planned for that a little bit better. Now, we are going to cast the Light of Protection. This is a new spell the Casket of Souls has available. Quite powerful, but only really effective, like, 
once everything is kind of tied up in combat and everything like that. I will see if I can cast it. It is eight to cast. That's a fail. Because I... Oh, wait, no, it's no, plus two. Yeah. Hey, oh, no, he's plus three. I seen the one. I didn't even consider the five. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm not rolling many spells today. So Light of Protection does go off. I assume you'd like the wizardly spell. Definitely wizardly awesome. spell this one. Boom. No. Nope. You do, yes. Oh, no, wait, I'm only, oh, no, no, I'm only plus three. You're only a level three. Yeah. I did get it. Interesting. Dang. That's a really good spell. This is an 18-inch aura of six up ward save, which does stack with regeneration. Do the ward save first, then the regen. And enemy units attacking those units suffer a negative one to their hit rolls. Ooh. And it would have affected this combat and this combat. Uh, this one eventually as well, maybe. But uh, Steve could have dispelled it on his turn. Six up, six up. Pretty yeah. good. Six that up minus one to hit. <laughs> that's the that's the big thing. Yeah, the, the six up ward could be a big deal for combat resolution, but that negative one to hit will win the combat. Yeah. yeah. That should conclude our strategy phase. Going to the movement phase, I do have some charges to declare. The sepulchral stalker is going to charge into the. I don't want to charge the Grail Knights. But it's better than being charged by the Grail Knights. So I'll charge the Grail Knights and the Knights of the Realm here. Charging them both because they're both the same distance away. And that's it for there. We're going to have our Tomb Guard yet again charge Sir Cecil and his Yeoman Guard. Then the last charge is our Cameron War Sphinx is going to engage the Grail Pilgrims over there. I'm going to measure this Scorpion out, but I don't think he's got... I don't think he's got it in him to make that charge. Over here, in fact, he does have it in him to make that work because he's got Swift Stride, so... Uh, they're immune to psychology because they're near a Grail character. They're unbreakable as well, which is, uh, it's like the Bretonian version of the Flagellants, essentially. Yep. Without being as punchy, but True. it's nice to have that kind of... More uh, way more defensive, though. Unbreakable brick. Yeah, that's that. Well, I mean, I love armies like that, so I'll never, that's a cool thing to have in a game. Uh, Cameron Wars, Sphinx will charge. Don't have to worry about the terror. We'll charge with a Scorpion in this direction. And I believe that'll be it for my charges. How would you like to respond? See, they have to hold. Yep. Uh, I'm holding everywhere. Hold, hold. Come on in, bud. And, oh, holding ever. All right, well, then they're going to make it in. Don't have to worry about that. This guy, I do have to roll. Could you measure? Uh, you know what? I'll just, it doesn't really matter. He moves seven plus four plus D6. Okay, he's going to go 17. 17 yeah, you don't yeah. Really measure that. He'll go right in the, the middle of them back over there. Boom. Good job, little scorpion. Uh, they're going to make it in over there. The War Sphinx is going to make it in over there. These guys are going to make it in over there, and we'll call them done. And I'm going to figure out the rest of my moves. going to maximize more on the Grail Knights because I think I got to. Uh, the rest of these moves, I want to get this priest in range to hit them with the spirit attack. Can't remember the name of the spell though. Soul spirits? It's uh, only 15 inch range though, so it's going to be not that easy to do because I need the first spell, Steed of Shadows, off. So we're going to go and go ahead and convey in Steed of Shadows. We do get a good roll there uh, with a plus four. You trick if Lady Elise is in range? She is in range, yeah. Alright, we'll do her. Yeah. So you're going to need to roll. No. Not that. That's a four. We oh, wait a second. Double. Waiting, waiting, waiting. She has a rule. Lady Elise has a rule called Arcane Backlash, because <gasps> uh, plus one to dispel. However, in addition, should she roll a natural double when making a dispel roll, not including double ones, right. uh, the spell is unbound. Damn. And the casting wizard suffers a wound. Ah, uh, boo, boo. Uh, armor saves allowed? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, I don't think he has one. Boy, I know he doesn't have one. He's a wizard. But he does have... Regeneration. He's okay. He takes a wound. The backlash hits his brain real hard. He's having a real difficult time today casting spells. <laughs> so no Spectral Steed, which I keep calling a Steed of Shadows, but it's actually called Spectral Steed. Sad times for this wizard. He will not be getting in range for Unquiet Spears, a perfect spell against Bretonian Knights, but not today. Well, not perfect. It's pretty good against him, though. I need to move. I need to be able to move uh, over here to get line of sight and range of it. Or so, so that is more than his four inch move will allow. With that in mind, I will wiggle a little bit and get in range of my casket. I gotta move, though. Well, they don't, they technically have to move. I forgot to move. Oh, them. yeah, he's charging. I'm just gonna go right here with him. He's kind of scared, though. He doesn't have uh, ooh, any ethereal to protect him for now, but he's okay enough. The rest of my stuff, these guys are gonna have to turn to face these guys. Ha ha ha. And just walk up towards them because I can't do much else Boo. with them. I'm able to really get out of the woods with them, they're just gonna move uh, forward towards the questing knights over here. Bringing it over to these last two units to move, where they're gonna wheel a little bit just to get better line of sight to this area. And I don't know what I'm gonna do with them. In fact, archers are open order, so they can just do a free pivot at the end of their move. So they don't really need to do two, that's good for these guys, because they uh, don't suffer the penalty for moving. Still wheel them all the same this way, and then I could pivot, I guess, a little bit more. But that should be okay. Uh, we'll go like this. 
In fact, I'm going to need their help. So they are going to turn this direction and uh, deal with all this nonsense coming up this way. And should finish their move off and uh, we're good. We're going to go to shooting. And we're going to just go ahead and start with these archers. Might as well go ahead and try. The Casca Souls can pivot on the spot all over the place, so to get better line of sight to its targets. We are going to hit this unit with the Light of Death, or try to. Not that I don't have the Light of Protection up, so I don't have to worry about it. Hi! Five. Uh, with a plus two, three is good enough on eight. Lady Elise. Yep. No magic for that guy. Uh, that's it. He doesn't have much he could do. Oh, I guess I could hit these guys with the Ruby Ring Ruin over here. I'm just going to cheat and pivot him that way. Oh, yeah, for sure. Boom. Ruby Ring Ruin! We do get a further plus one on this because the casket nearby it does increase bound weapon or bound spells as well. What do you lose? Plus three. No. Oh, no. We do get the fireball. Two no, not again. Uh, okay. Seven. And threes. No AP, though. That's going to kill four of them. Which will not be a panicking. Far away from Quiet Spears, but it is a panicking. It is a panicking. Oh, we're good. I got sword nearby. Yes. I rolled open. And I will fire these two archers uh, before they join all the other bones on the ground. A couple last shot. Oh, one last shot into them because um, you can't volley fire and move. Twang. Ah. <laughs> And let's do fighting. Let's figure out what these sepulchral stalkers are able to achieve here. I got one attacking the... Well, I probably have the initiative, but one will be attacking the Knights of the Realm, two will be attacking the Grail Knights. Yeah, you're... Because of charging, I'll be initiative four, but Grail Knights are initiative five. So that's kind of fancy. However, the Bretonian Lances do get blunted when they're charged. Other than countercharging in this yeah. case, but too far away to do it. Uh, so they do lose the extra attacks, but... And the Lance Formation, but they still have the three guys out front doing the three Grail Knights. One of them's a champion. And the Grillers are fastest. We're hitting on threes. Yes. And we're rooting on fours. Two of them. Get the heavy armor. Fail those and regeneration six up. Oh, make one. Nice. It's combat res, though. Two attacks each with their halberds into the Grail Knights first. Uh, a couple hits. Oh, a couple hits. And no wounds. And one into the Knights of the Realm. Ooh. They do have a cool new rule this edition where they get D3 attacks with their tails uh, in addition to their attacks with their hand weapons or halberds, whatever they use. So two of them are going to attack the Grail Knights. One of them is going to attack the Knights of the Realm. So the Knights of the Realm, D3 attacks. It'll be fours. Nope. And then two D3 into the Grail Knights. Oh, that's not bad. Five of them. Fours. Hey, there we go. Okay. <laughs> and I believe those all wound. Abu, they're only trying four. They need toughness four on them. I Min can't remember if you have AP. It they matters. Do. Minus one. Oh, you got one. A blessing. Yeah, did they get the blessing? Oh, they do have the blessing. They're not it's exiles. It's only strength four. Yeah. So six up in Valm. Well, I'll take a Grail Knight. In combat resolution. Uh, okay. Oh, yeah. I forgot. You got your... <laughs> My uh, knights on this side are hitting on threes. I'm assuming you're up to skill three, right? Yeah. It's one hit. Uh, oh, sorry, three, three hits. And fives. And then we have six horses. Clip clop. Fours. Nice. Fives. One, one more. We got heavy armor and regeneration. No, one more. As well as grill knights. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Your combat res, because you are probably going to win this one. Uh, I got two wounds on combat res. Again, the region does not prevent combat resolution. You got a banner. And what kind of formation do I they got, adopt? I got three wounds. Three wounds. Oh, because I protect. Two, two and three with plus one. The regen, right. that's right. Sorry about that. I confused myself there. Three wounds of combat res. You got a banner. And then what kind of formation? They're both closed order. Okay, so they're two plus, uh, plus one each. And sadly, I did not do that much back to you. I killed one Grail Knight. I'll take it. I'll crumble four, but we're indomitable one. So I'll, oh, sorry, I'll crumble five. I'm indomitable one to crumble four. Two of them do go down, though. It's not great. So it has to be keep this guy in the middle. This keep guy them both pinned down. Boom, boom, boom. For now, it's uh, hopefully a worthy trade-ish. And then we're going to do the exciting fight last. So we're going to go right on to this nonsense. The least exciting fight? <laughs> yeah, we're going to do the cav. And then we'll do the monster fighting the battle pilgrims. And we'll figure out how this goes. My surgeon's dead, but you know there's still one over here. So I'll throw one attack over there. Uh, fours and fours. Nope. All right. And then fours and fours into the rest of the unit as we use our... Spears. Oh, nice. Two, Two of them. Uh, we're going to have five up safe and a regeneration. Ooh, it does kill two of my attacks back at you. Two attacks in particular were horses in the front. <gasps> so I'll have all these models still get to attack, but two of the horses don't get to attack because technically they're stepping up. 
it's more of a more of a thought that even though they would have had supporting attacks in the back, they do have to actively step up. And as they're doing the step up, that replaces their attack for that combat. So I don't believe these two models get to attack. Only the three in the middle get to attack. Yeah, just double checking that that is accurate. Uh, which is, again, they finally brought back the no step up mechanic. I'm a big fan of it. Shame. Uh, and it actually makes initiative matter in this case because it is the defensive stat as opposed to a stat that only saves you against the purple sun uh, <laughs> as opposed to the last edition. And they, we don't have to worry about that either. So we got our three models there attacking your guys. One of them is a champion though, and I can just do the horses as well. And these are going to be fours and then fours. Two wounds. What's it going to be? Five up. Oh, wait, make one. Excellent. Ooh, that, that, that's a, that's that's a, a, lot, of big, a lot of changes. So you do two damage to me, you got one rank now, and a banner, and closed order. I have... You could be open, but you're closed. I, yeah, I think I have one moon back at you, I got a banner, and I am closed order. So I'll crumble two less, or two, however I might be near my battle standard bear, though I don't believe I am. It's about two, two and a half inches off, so uh, they're just going to take their two crumbles. Boom, boom, boom. After you push back. And then, I, oh yeah, after I get huh. pushed back. Oh no! Do a leadership to restrain the follow-up? You are... Uh, they are leadership five, but they are warband, so leadership six. Right, it's for all leadership checks. Yeah. So they're going to restrain. Then this fight... Wait, what do I even gain? I gain nothing. Uh, you get the... Uh, I don't know, you get to choose a different <laughs> weapon, if you want. Uh, no. no. I'll just follow up. I all gain right. nothing. <laughs> all right, fair. Other than choosing a different weapon, I'm with two spears again. One thing I kind of wanted to look up, wasn't too sure about, is like, um, does that separation of combat there start a new combat? Like, even though you follow up, do you get to choose weapons again, or do you have to keep the weapons? No, it's up? the same combat. Yeah. Mm, fair. What if you chose not to follow up and charge again? Then I could switch my halberd, ah, but I won't use my spears anyway, but I'd have half as many attacks. Yeah. Well, so the, there's no the point. I'd actually attacks lose. really good. Yeah. And we come to this fight. I'll start with the Cav Spears, I believe, for initiative, and then I'll figure out the rest. Cavalry Spears. What's a web skill on a battle pilgrim? I am not surprised. I wound them twice. So it is six of armor. And then a five up award from the blessing of the lady. Nice. Hey. Lady protects. And then I got to figure out the rest of my initiatives. Do the tail's little, the little scorpion tail attack. But though in this case, it doesn't matter because I'm fighting anyways. And it wouldn't have hit or it hadn't, wouldn't have poisoned. And one wound. No armor, just the lady who does not protect. We got one of them. Boop. Stomp all over them or try to. Uh, I've got uh, mostly hit. Come on, one misses. And two of them wound. Do you get your five up award? Three wounds. Ooh, uh, yeah. one more die. Blessing of the lady protects. Oh, two of them. Only one dies. And that is uh, it for my I got initial step one attacks with the stomps. But you get to go with yours. All right, we'll swing this way. Whoa. You got uh, three of them attacking. Because one had to step up. Oh, crap. Oh, the they all hit. It doesn't matter. So three hits. Yep. Uh, uh, trick three. Toughness five. You killed one over here. Yep. So I'm going to have uh, one plus their reliquary attack. And then you get the fighting rank on this yeah. guy fighting oh, too. Yeah. Lots of attacks from the the, uh, the reliquary, and this you got hatred. Ooh! All right, but we need those sixes. Sixes. One of them. One. It's armor and regen. Nice. Oh, nice. Well, still take it though. Do all my stomps. I can do them all at the same time because the AP doesn't matter on the big guy. Uh, so two D three plus two. Uh, the plus two's from the big guy. So oh, two D three. Yeah. Well, it's D three per, but uh, this guy gets an extra two. Eight of them wounding on twos. Uh, that is seven ward save. Actually, you have uh, armor on them. Haven't been considering that. Well, all the same, I'll take the negative hit as an amazing roll. I have to be greedy and not re-roll it. So I'll say that uh, the one failed was from him, and I rolled max anyway. So he'll be five of them, and he'll be three armor saves from him because he got three wounds. Doesn't in. matter. And then, yeah, they're all wards. Hey. And wards, ladies. Nice. Oh, three more. Got three of them. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, fun fact, these guys are heavy infantry, but this guy's not strong enough to disrupt ranks anyways. But! It's a tie combat, so I win. Combat. I have to do combat res here. I got five kills on you. I got a flank. And you've got two ranks, a banner, a wound, and closed order. I win by one. They are, yeah, unbreakable because they're near a grail vow character. Model, yeah. Model, yeah. Oh, uh, okay. We're over to this one. Exciting. Do you want to change one. challenges? Uh, no, I won't bother. <laughs> Characters <laughs> right across from one another. Why not? All right, Cecil, Just chop right, down that king. Right into the king with everything. Force to hit him. And I got glittering scales. Oh! Reroll one. Oh! Oh I'm going to get him. I I'm going to get him. It is the hour of Bretonia. No, it's enough to kill you. It's enough to kill you. Two of them. 
Uh, these are not killing blow or anything on no. these. They just regular stats. They're two damage apiece. Yeah. Ward regens. Oh, no. Oh. I still take four for combat res, but yeah. Again, because I'm charging the spiky wall, I have no initiative bonuses, so you get to go. Yeah, I don't really matter. You can go first. You're all strength oh, three. That's right. I was going, I'm ready to go. Yeah. Spears written on fours. Yeah. Oh, that's a good roll. Yeah. But we need fives. Uh, four. I'll have a five up. And a regeneration. Oh, nice. Still four combat res on me, though, but I've only lost one tomb guard. Bam. We're going to see what we can do with our herald. Uh, he's going to attack into the wizard there to try and take her out. We hit her three times. I assume your well, warm-ups go four or five now. Yeah, you're good. And two wounds on her as well. She did. No ward, nothing like that. No. Down with the wizard. And then we had one, two, three, four. Four Tomb Guard attacking. One of them's a champion, though. The weapons go four now. Threes to hit. Ooh, good start. And wounding on threes with the minus one. They have Kopesh's. The rerolls to hit are... Well, sorry. Rerolls of one are only to the hit rolls. Sixes. Kill two more. Boom, boom. And then we have the King into Cecil. Weapons go seven with the King's great weapon. Two hits. And twos. Just minus two. Six up armor. He's got four up. Oh, he dies just. Down he goes. We kill? There's Cecil. No. Oh, it's the hill. Interesting. Very interesting. I won't Whoa. get any rank bonuses. And I'm probably going to lose the combat because of all the regens, but we got a big guy down. For the combat res, you did four damage to my king, which was all regenerated. And then you did three wounds to my tomb guard. Two of them are regenerated. And you have two ranks and a banner. Two ranks, a banner, closed order. That's nuts. It's a big combat res. On my side, I killed your wizard, I killed Sir Cecil, but they only had one wound each. I killed three human guard? Three human guard. I don't get my rank bonuses because I'm disrupted charging the spiky wall. I got two kinds of fancy banners. I think you killed two human guard. Oh, I'll take one back in there. And then I am closed order. So I am going to lose that combat by four. <laughs> <laughs> ah, you're indomitable. Yeah, I'll be indo so I'm indomitable two or the BSB. You have to roll the BSB to find out which one's better. You take that one. So I'll crumble two models instead of four because the king is indomitable two. And I give ground. Crumble two models. Boop, boop, boop. And I'll give ground. Test. Test. Hey. Oh, we're holding back. We're holding back. Yeah, it's good. That's good. Low is good. Low is good. Uh, that is it. For turn four, we're going to go to turn four for Bretonia. I will note, I forgot to shoot these guys. I'm just going to take some quick five shots at these knights here. Shouldn't change too much. Boom. Boom. One wound. Steve's saying I did it. Do a I save. I did it. Okay, it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't, doesn't matter. matter. I, I don't remember doing it, but if I did a, if I did a wound, I would go look. We got the strategy phase for Lady Elise here. She's got some enhancements and hexes to cast. Maybe. The only thing I want to do with her is cast the Lady's Gift. All right, fair. Um, so they cast it at 10 plus, which means I'm going to give a unit five of regeneration. Uh, I'm gonna give it to the questing knight. Uh, yeah, the questing knights. I mean, next to the um, air knights. You might as well try and stop it. It's free. Oh, failed. That's the only strategy phase thing. That is. Lots of charges. Well, I'm gonna hold. Well, I'll stand and shoot with them, but I don't think I can. I'm probably too close. No, no, so. I'm, not gonna I'm not gonna charge them. Oh, so okay. I'm gonna have this paladin charge them because he's too close to get stand and shot. Yep, fair. They are gonna go after that. Big guy, gotcha. Lady Elise is not charging. Okay. King is gonna charge them. Yep. Uh, we the are, Duke, the Duke. The Duke, the Duke. And we're going to charge these archers. Yep. And that's all it for the charges. All right, well, they're going to... No stand, no reactions other than holding for I'm the most part. Here. that one. Boop, hello. And over to here. Do you got to roll this one? He's in. Interesting. Aw, oh, I need a line of sight to charge. Yeah, it's, it's going to be difficult to get used to that if you're coming from 8th edition and you haven't played the other editions a little bit. I didn't. We didn't even think about it until we declared the charge there. Again, most all you just block line of sight unless you're a large target, which he's not. Can't Boom. even feel that one. Yeah, this no. one. I reroll ones. <laughs> and, and then, then add a d6. Uh, <laughs> plus one after that, too. For the air and shield. I want to see this guy's march blocked. Nine, he's ten. Not. No, he's good. I want to stay about here. And it's going to be a little bit more than his 10 inch move. Tangling with stuff over here. Zipper charges there. That guy moved. And we're going to move the human. About eight inches. They'll shoot and move eight inches again. Yep, it's a little different. They kind of operate the same way. They get to move, shoot, move. Yeah, so instead better. of marching and moving, they just move, shoot, move, which is better because yeah. more options. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And over to here. We lady the, Elise is going to... We got the lady. Hmm. Lady Elise is going to go right there, and that will be it for movement. I thought she's going to tuck in right beside them. Not joining the unit or anything like that, but just getting to that position, get 
good line of sight over this way. We're gonna keep her there all the same. Okay, that's it for movement. Where do you want to start shooting? Shooting. We're gonna go after fire at the uh, tomb guard over here. Tomb, tomb guard. Yeah. Boom, boom. Yeah, firing at the tomb uh, guard. They did not move. Sitting on fours. Right in their flank. Got and fives. Oh, very Three. good. Three, nice. They have light armor shields. That'll save one of them. And do they stand back up from regeneration? No, two of them are peppered with arrows and die. Trebuchet, they're too close. So we're going to go right there. Oh, this is a minimum range, right? Direct hit! Direct hit. Oh, right in the middle. Well, that's an easy one. There's a model right in the middle. Interestingly enough, is less... Well, oh, it's going to be less hits than the bigger unit, but it's quite a bit less. It's nine potentials and one for sure. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, that's pretty good. That's pretty good, So yep. this guy squatted on a two. Yep. And, the and these ones. are actually... Twos as well, Strike but five. these are only AP one. Okay, well, I'll do that then. Two at AP uh, one, and then the three regenerations. Three, three die. Boom, boom, boom. In the back there. To show people the tool again, it's when the unit's five wide, you'll have a guy right in the middle. Two on each side of them, right? And same same deal going wide there. So one direct hit and eight, nine around or something like that. Eight around. So I caught something um, just recently, or just, just now basically. Uh, they don't have war bows. They have short bows. So no negative one modifier for shooting after moving. Oh, nice. However, now nothing's in range because they're shorter range. Oh, wait, they were going around with war bows? I was, I I was firing yeah, war bows. Not that it really mattered, but we're going to go ahead and just do a just, reserve move now. Yep. Pew, pew, pew. And on to combat. I'm just going to do Thank that. you. I don't care. I choose the overrun. Yes. Boom, boom, boom. And where do you want to go next? I actually want to do the nice errant last because I can blow up and do some damage. So gotcha. we'll do the paladin. Oh, bring it on. If you're a check, oh, yeah, I would number you. Oh, you fail. He's a BSB. Uh, you can't reroll fear. Oh, no, no, sorry. Yeah. Um, they're veterans. Oh, he's a veteran? The, in, in the, uh, they have the Crusader rule. Gotcha. Okay. For the Errantry War. So veterans let you reroll all leadership checks if anyone's curious. They used to fight in the undead. All right, let's see what he can do. Three's hit with their lance and two's the kill. Three, uh, regens. Ooh. Regen one. Pegasus. Uh, three's the hit. Ooh. And nothing. All right. I have a grand total of, uh, well, th four, nope, three attacks. That's how that works. I hit you once, no wound. You got stomps as well. Monstrous cavalry. We on twos. This two, one's AP one. Two stomps. Uh, okay, AP one. The little guy's got armor bane. Well, big guy, I guess. Uh, so that's the regen. Well, that's the armor save, sorry. And then the regens. Two more. Five in total with the regen I made earlier. Did five wounds to me, and you got a fancy banner. Boom. I don't have much. <laughs> I just crumble six, sadly. That kills the unit, exactly. There's only six left. Yeah, I don't have any um, indomitable nearby here. Excellent. In this fight. We'll do the grill knights first, obviously. Uh, we're hitting on threes and fours. Two. Two of them, no minuses. Uh, make a heavy armor and a regen. We do. Remember all the same. We one knight rest. Uh, on a three and a five, and then three forces on a four. And five, we're done. Did you do the fighting rank over here with these guys? Oh, that's right, sorry, hold on. I forgot about the fighting rank for the grail. It missed, and then fighting rank over there, it missed. And again, fighting ranks are only ever one attack. That's why that, that guy only had the one. Sorry, supporting attacks as well. Anytime you're not in base contact, you get only one attack, if you're able to attack. If you summon the horses, get yeah, it as Two well. more fighting rank attack horses. Didn't no, matter. Not, <laughs> all right, just make sure we got them, though. Attack the grail knights some more, because I don't think it matters which one I attack. They're the same save, I assume. Wait, what did I give the regeneration do? Uh, I don't think you do. I don't remember you declaring. I didn't stop it. So you can just put on whoever you want. I'll, pull, I'll well, attack who doesn't I, I was yeah. debating the Grail and the Pegasus. Uh, I'm going to just say there because I didn't, I didn't declare. Okay, fair. Uh, I got a couple hits on the Grail Knights. Because otherwise, I'll just attack them. It doesn't yeah, really matter. Yeah, for sure, yeah. exactly. Uh, strength four, so a wound. Oh, wait, no, no they're T4. Four. Four. I should. You know, I'm going to cheat and just attack them instead anyways. I need the combat res. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting they're T4. So one wound on them at minus one. We're good. Matter. Don't matter there. And the till. One attack, a hit, and a wound. We're good. Minus Wait, one. Oh, then we're not good. Lady. The strength. Uh, not enough. Not enough. Okay, I think four. Yeah. Uh, well, I got a wound, but so do you because I regened it. And so that's a tie. You're going to get a banner and two closed orders. Just enough. Oh, you're indomitable. Indomitable. He's got one wound left. I will get you. We'll get you. Yeah. Okay, and then we're on to this nonsense. We will put one attack into the champion just in <laughs> case uh, you just survive. Nope. Uh, fours and fours. The spears. Okay. Two. Champ the champion or the unit. That's a five up armor save and then regeneration. No, that is a dead uh, musician actually. Champion and regular guy. Well, I guess I can do the horses as well. Here's the two horses. Uh, no hits on them. And the champion. 
No wound either. That's probably me just crumbled dead. Yeah. Uh, bye bye. Because <laughs> you got the kill, the rank, and the banner on me. Or the kill and the banner. But yeah. And right, before we go on, I fret my wind blast. Yeah, she wanted to cast I need to blast. push this guy back, this unit back. And wind blast. Uh, Ooh, eight and hit 11 total. You got it. Oh, I miscast. Ooh, I'm going to roll. Ooh, a bad one. That's a real bad miscast. Luckily, he's not in a unit. It's the five inch blast, strength 10 AP4 hit to him and his unit. Well, around him. That's all. Nothing else will be hit but him on that. He's wounded and he regenerates. That's <laughs> fine. He doesn't care. Right, wind blast is D3 plus three. Uh, so four hits that are wounding on twos. Um, and minus one. Minus one. Armor and the regeneration. No regen, they die. But the reason why we needed to cast this spell, because it pushes you back two inches. Right. And I don't want you countercharging my knights errant after I kill that dumb. Oh, this thing. Yeah. yeah. He gave ground a little bit, making the charge over here probably impossible. Now we're back to this fight. What's your initiative? Uh, three and three, and then one. Okay, so yeah. we're all same here, so I'll do, I'll do my four. Oh, this guy's, sorry, I'm gonna remember his poison tail. He's got one always strikes first attack. Or oh, initiative 10 attack. You don't have to do it. Uh. I'll do just I, to prevent one of the attacks back at you. Yeah. Uh, if it hits, it does hit. It does not wound. That probably wounds strength five. All right, five up. Oh, you're good. All right. Uh, hitting on fours and sixes. sixes, and then over here we have six attacks from this, one attack from that guy, plus the fighting rank. Yep. So all over here should be about. Oh, uh, wait a second. That guy should be about nine attacks. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, nice. Let's see those again. Fours? No. <laughs> Keep me lots of sixes. All right, nothing. All right, and then I got my Do your worst. guys up top and the guy, and him himself. The cavalry spears hitting on threes because I'm only web skill three. And wounding on threes because there's trying four, two of them. Two AP on that. Only five up. And, and five up. Kills one. And then you got his four attacks. He's web skill four. And twos. Minus two. So three wards. Should be three wards. Oh, three wards? Yeah. Kills two. Boom, boom. And then uh, I got my stomps. You guys got D3 plus two. Nice, he's got nice. five. These are gonna be three ward saves, which you make two of. And this guy will have D3, which one's on a two. But you have a five up. No, it's only one five up, sorry. No, that's right, no, right. No, five no, up, no, we did anyway. All right, all right, not bad. Well, in the combat, but they are unbreakable. We're just working on it, we're getting there. They're gonna do their job. I won't have enough damage to get them. Okay. Uh, so nice turn. Oh, yes, here we well, go. What do I attack when I attack you? That's a dang good question. <laughs> Are you attacking my crew? Up skill three. Fours. Oh, they're only all their errands, that's right. Yep. And. I'm toughness four. Two, two wounds. Two wounds. Two. Regeneration five up. Ooh, fail both. Horses? Two clock. Fours? Fives? Two. Oh, two is nasty. Armor? Ooh, I only have light armor. And bolt oh, regen. Ooh, that's four damage. That's them. Oh, they're dead. That's all four damage. You do the unbound spirits rule. Every unit, friend and foe within 12, might get hit by this. So I got two within 12, and so do you. This guy might I be have three. 12. Oh, yeah, you have a character there. Start with my guys. Uh, go ahead and roll four up. See if you kill my... Hey, nope. I'll do the guys in the back there. Yes, D6 hits. Five of them. Right, three hits. Ooh, three wounds. Kill three additional models because no armor or regen allowed. And my character on a four up. Oh no, D6. Six. 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 Oh no. And does it uh, kill him? I use toughness four or four, uh, three. I believe so. Toughness four. Ah, uh, it doesn't matter. One wound. No regen, but he takes a wound. I don't know why I rolled. He was dodged quite a bit of damage this game. And then your stuff. I'll roll for you. The Qu Knights Errant. Oh, they're fine. The character. She's fine, and the BSB, the Battle Standard Bearer, the Paladin will suffer. A four hits. It's five because of his mount. No wounds. He's okay, and then this is removed. And that will conclude turn four of six. We're on to battle round five now, going on to the Tomb Kings. Oh, this falls off there. We're going to try and make some magic happen here. Let's go with this guy resurrecting. I think I need them just to hold for another turn. So... We are going to arise them. We're going to pass. We're going to get D four plus D3 models back. We got oh. seven models. They're back to full. I mean, we're one shy. And uh, we're going to cast some spells. We'll try Cursed Blades again. Hey. Uh, we're going to pass that barely with a seven. Might as well try and stop we'll do it. do a lease. Yep. Oh, I actually get it. Ooh, yeah, actually level three. Both same wizard. Oh, we're both level four. She's level, she's level three caster, but level four dispeller. He's just level four caster. Try Spirit Leech, Hex the Yeoman Guard on the hill. We got that with a seven. You just gotta show it eight. eight to stop nah. it. No. 
So they're minus two leadership up on the hill there. <laughs> and my will be done on the king. This should have is probably my best bet up there, just to strike before the men at arms. Make them initiative four. We're good. It. Boom, so initiative four on them. It's good to see that they're all relatively useful. And movement. They're gonna charge up there. Let's roll this one. None of this needs to resolve. None of this needs to resolve. I am left with very little. Uh, hmm. I'm going to attempt a charge here. It's uh, nine inches away, or eight and some eight and a half, but nine inch charge. So I need a five. I will hold. Yeah. Uh, that's about it. So let's see if we get in. No, we're going to fail that charge by one, actually. Failing forward. And uh, well, it's easy enough. That's it for my moves. We are going to go to cast... Well, I gotta cast the conveyed spell before I move him. Ah. Uh, Spectral Steed! Oh, I got it with a, well, a five. Usually Ladies. I got a six or a double. Oh, you stop it. All right. So I gotta figure out what to do with him. <laughs> At least get him somewhere safe ish, maybe, but I don't know if anywhere's safe. Yeah, he's just gonna scuttle his way back here. He's gonna skulk to there. Uh, that'll conclude movement. I'm gonna go shooting. He's gonna ruby ring these lads. Mm. Boom. Got it with a nut, well, an 11. So you got to show an eight to stop it or a double. Lady. Oh, she's unstoppable. Jeez. And then we'll try the soul spear. Oh, there we go. That's a good roll. Give me a double from the lady. No, no not quite. All right. So it's going to be 2d3 strength, three hits. Okay, six. Huh? I, think it, I think it's 2d3. Sorry, unquiet spirits is nuts. It's 3d6 strength, two, no armor 15 saves. hits. That's why it's so good against nice no armor saves allowed. Strength two, just kills him on five. So they get the Lady Blessing, though. They the 11 of the 15 hits, fives to kill. Oh, one. <laughs> and I owe you uh, four more. Killed one. Eat that. That's yeah. not even a panicking. That'll finish off my shooting. We can go right to combat. Let's just resolve this one. I don't think it's going to go very well for me. Grail Knights, all of their attacks this time, or all attacks are supposed to have, threes and fours. One. One of them. No. He's dead. Got him. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. You shall reform. Into the lance. Got Knight of the Realm Lance and uh, Ground Knight Lance. Ooh, let's go ahead and get this sad combat out of the way over here. Maybe I can get them low enough to get some points out of them. A little Poison Strikes first, tail hits, and wounds. Then you have a... Uh, five of me. armor and five of board. Got him. There's no attack back. That's about it. We're going to put... Ah, uh, we'll put... Oh, no, he's beast contact. So we'll go one over there. Hit and nothing there. And then the rest forward. Nine attacks forward. Couple hits. Oh, hey. the armor? No. And regeneration. Oh, take a damage. Scorpion has three remaining attacks with his claws, giving you the snip. Twos to wound at, well, enough to go to your lady save. How many? Just one. Guild, one more. And then we have the Tomb Guard on top, hitting on threes. Uh, Webs go three, yep, hitting on threes. Strength four, so no wounds. The Camryan War Sphinx will step around you, wounding twice at your lady save. Two, one more. Okay, and then the stomps. The stomps, D3 plus three. It'll be, sorry, D3 plus two. So here's those ones. That's three blessings. Kills three, nice. And then we have the tomb scorpion. We'll have three as well, and you get armor saves. Three more. Light armor and shields. Nice, and the blessing, strength five. One more. All right, we're getting there, I guess. <laughs> we're both unbreakable. Well, I guess you're supposed to be giving ground every time, eh? Oh, that's yeah. right. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, how many times did you beat me? Three? It would be like, boom, boom, boom. You'd be like over to this corner here. I'm just gonna compensate for that by just doing the three give grounds it would have been this way. Maybe that should be good enough. It doesn't change much over here. Uh, that is it for that fight. We are good to move on to this one on the hill. Let's do that one last. Let's do this one over here. Do this Bretonian Paladin. Paladin, threes and twos. Oh, oh. Nice. There a little too late for the whiff now. Would have rather been against literally anything else. Uh, is it two damage? Yeah, one regen. Okay, that kills a guy, I suppose. And then the great weapons on good threes start. and twos. Three of them, man. Regeneration. All right. That is going to be two more die, but there's one more combat rest for regen. Horses. Uh, threes, actually. Yeah, I'm only about to go two. Uh, one. Armor. Regen. One more. The champions attacking back. Nope, nothing. Uh, so I lose by loss by five combat rest because of the regen. Oh, and then you got a banner. A and, and a lance. I got three. Oh, I don't get. No, they already charged this game. So I got three ranks. Are you in the woods? And a band. Oh, geez, that's right. The freaking woods. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. I have a banner. Closed order. So I lose five more guys. 
guess I won't be in the woods anymore, but still rough. Okay, now we got the big fight up here. I got a better initiative because of the my will be done. I issue a challenge. I charge. I, I'll just accept with my champion, I guess, in the middle. Oh, forget it. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> to the Herald's attacks into the unit. He's got a hit. Well, we have uh, Chris Blades up, though. First time it's actually mattered, really. And two, one wound, or two wounds minus one. Uh, six up. All right, kill two. And then we got five other attacks with the random guys. Keep it classy, I'll pull my champion and your champion. Oh, he misses twice. Three more tomb guard, right? Yep. Two hits, one wound, minus one. Six up, hey. Nice, that's a six, he made it. And then you get to go, then my tomb king. All right, so uh, champion and champion, honorable duel. All right. All right, easy. And then um, <laughs> four more guys. Uh, one hit, one wound. A light armor shield, and regeneration. Oh, sorry. Five more. All from the supporting attacks. Spears. Two more! Boom, boom, boom. Nice. Uh, and nice. All right, so I lose two guys. And the king on three. Ah, he's actually high enough to hit on. Well, you're up skill three, aren't you? I'm skill three on them. I'm not seven on him anymore. So a couple misses and a wound. Uh, AP two. He's yeah, dead. Just kills one guy. Boom. All right. Well, not great. I expected to do more than three wounds, but that's what we have. So I got three wounds. No rank bonuses, but I do have two kinds of banners, and I'm in closed order. You, on the flip side, have a banner and a rank, two wounds, and closed order. I won by one. Should be good. You finally won! Finally won, and you're minus two leadership. You do a shield wall, but that'll only matter if you roll well in your leadership here. I, effectively down by three, but... So, leadership six. He's still alive. Seven for Warband. Yep. Minus two. Minus, minus two, yeah, down to five. And then uh, you won by one. I won by one, yep. Yeah. Oh, nice. <sighs> They break. Excellent. Perfect. Because the spell, they break. And they're going to go... Uh, you're chasing, right? Yeah, I'll definitely oh, chase. Nice roll. Jeez. Uh, I'll go eight. You're not getting our lives, though. <laughs> nope, not getting their lives. They'd, they'd end up rolling up and down the hill and over that way. They panic the war machine. Uh, six. Uh, Choose to fight the trebuchet. It doesn't panic. It holds. The, the crew holds, but I get to overrun into it. And this is my hill now, but... Uh, unfortunately, the rest of my forces are buckling, so it's not great. And I will point out, after getting fear in that fight the whole time, but I don't think it would have mattered too much, because uh, Sir Cecil, when it would have mattered, was pretty high leadership. Anyways, that is the end of my turn. We are going to go to turn five for Bretonia, and then we'll have one last battle round to see where it stands. All right, we got some spells. The only thing I want to do is give regeneration to my uh, nice oh. Aaron here from Lady Elise. Yes, sir. Oh, Ten? that's enough to give him five regeneration. Oh, that's pretty good. Gold. No, you got it. All right. Should bring us to movement. Yep, lots of charges. Luka. All right. They're coming for him. Go for, go for it. Roll it up. They're going over there. Yep. They have to fear check. Uh, yeah, you just do it normally. Nope, you're good. Uh, the uh, paladin. Yep. Fear. Which is good. Good. And at least is not going to go. Yeah, that makes sense. These knights errant are going to try for it. Yep. Are They're good. good. Uh, these grills are in range, charge of spider, or scorpion. Ah, uh, you don't have to do fear. No fear, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this guy, he, oh man, so I'm gonna have them go here. Now him, screw it, he's gonna be brave. Go for the big one. Big guy, gotcha, okay. Um, yeah, because they're gonna make it, they're gonna make it. All right, absolutely. Let's roll these off, let's start right here. starts over there. A five plus four, nine. I haven't measured it. And they're gonna make it with that. Oh, I'll have to roll the extra die, he's gonna get in. Gonna come right on in. This is the one. This and the Grail Knights. The oh, reroll ones. That's true. Okay. Uh, and D6. Awesome, 10. And then plus one for being the Iron Tree. So 19 inch charge. And they the Scorpion was within the legal charge range as well. They need to overshoot um, it. Um, Boom, four plus. I'll reroll the one. Okay, so, so four plus five, not the two, the one. Yeah. Cool. Plus, plus six, cause the Iron Tree. Well, plus one, cause you rolled a one for the extra Swift Stride, oh, yeah. plus the Iron Tree, yeah. Very dramatic and perfect Bretonian charge in front of the skeleton warriors, who probably won't do very well. This one I can fail, but I refuse to. Five plus, ooh, 11 <laughs> plus <laughs> their movie. Yeah, yeah, he's there. In. Boom, this is what he gets for not being a good wizard. They. Bye bye, <laughs> they're giving up the field. <laughs> yeah, we're done here. <laughs> Everything on the field is in combat. There's no room to shoot bows anywhere, except uh, she can Flip -flop. Um, maneuver around. You're done. And uh, where do you want to start here? Start here. The Paladin. Threes. Okay. <laughs> awesome. And then the... Everyone's great weapons. So I get... I'll go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Might as well just do it. It doesn't matter. Oh. If they, 
Yeah, already rolled. He has uh, a good roll. Five wounds. <laughs> Generations, but these guys. Oh, actually, hold on. No, that'd be armor saves. These would be horses. Oh, that works. So, so there's only arms. four. So re-roll. There's only four armor oh, saves. Oh, yeah, four of them. All right. We'll do his uh, one armor save and regens. Uh, three die. There that's, we go. That's proper initiative. Boom. Now you get to swing. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, I will only have the champion attacking, though. Well, actually, he's not even in the proper spot. He's got those two guys over there fighting in the fighting rank. Champion's one of them. I fought with him earlier. Didn't mean to. Uh, no wounds there. And then you get to go with the great weapons. Yeah. Uh, threes and twos. Three. Three, three regens. Ooh, three more fails. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, well, not great, but not the worst. So I got a banner and a rank now because I'm not in the woods anymore in closed order. You, however, have many kills. So three, and then six. So you're up by three, and you got a banner and a lance formation. So I have crumble five. I got one rank left. Not great, not great. And we can do this fight over here. Oh, let's do this over the first. Oh, you want to get that help one? You out here? Oh, just Done. take the trebuchet. <laughs> I'll reform to face down the hill and... Observe the battlefield behind me as obviously it all went downhill very quickly. He got the hill. Simply cost the Tomb King everything. <laughs> everything. You want to do the wizard one next? Yeah, no, no, don't try that on me. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you do, it kills my regen if he dies right away. I don't know if that matters. No, I'd rather You're probably not going to get him with two guys, yeah. And resolve all this nonsense. Uh, I believe you know your initiatives better than I do, so who's first? Probably the paladin. Maybe the paladin. Yep. So three attacks for the lance on threes and twos to kill. We have regeneration. Regeneration to die. Uh, knights of uh, the realm are threes and twos. Yep. Uh, so the three of them. Three uh, of them. Regeneration. Two. I'll just, I won't pull the models to say who's three more combat res, but there's one guy left there, I guess. Five combat res before models are dead, so I remember. Uh, actually, I can't roll these together. The knights errant were hitting you on threes as well. Nice. And twos. I am only web skill two. So five more. Five more. We regen one of those, so four more die. Pegasus. Nice, good start. Uh, they're all wounding on twos. Strength five, minus yeah. one. No, no AP, no AP. No AP. Fives then. Ooh, and a regen. Okay, one more. And horsies. They are threes and fours. Hey. Oh, that's bad. Hey. Yeah. Not four more dead. Killed 13 of them. That means uh, I only got a few left, and the combat res is, uh, they're all crumbling. To, they're effectively crumbling to this. So there's 13 less models. I'm just being lazy, not pulling them so I can pull the whole tray. So this would be 5, 10, 3. So there'll just be this one model there. So there's only 11 left, and I lost combat by, like, easily 15 or something. Uh, I could attack back with the champion, but that's not going to do anything, and they are going to crumble to death. And we're going to have the errant knights overrun into our character. The other guy's just going to chill. There's no point in really doing anything with him, I guess. Overrunning into the poor character. And they're gonna skewer him. Uh oh. On fours. Yep. And threes. Three. Oh yeah, there's strength three. five. Uh, regents. Oh, he takes. Uh, he's gonna. He takes a wound. He's got two, one left. And then the uh, other guys with their. I assume they have calves. I'm gonna let the errant horses take this. <laughs> uh, two hits. Five's the wound. Oh, there's a wound. wound. We got a wound. Oh, he's dead. My army loses its regeneration immediately, and then at the end of the phase, everything will crumble. And then over to this nonsense. We got your Duke first. Yep, he's gonna be the fastest. Throwing a lance in on threes and fours. One and minus two. We can have a regen against that. We'll take it. I don't get regen because the Hierophant. I think well, I met yeah, my Hierophant's dead. They should take a terror test to charge in. There is no, there's no terror on the charge anymore. Oh, it's, it's just fear. Well, it's fear, but like gotcha. terror I'll is different. I'll do their fear now then. So they are they pass not their, fear. They pass their fear on the way in. Oh, no, you outnumber me. So you don't have to do fear. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Changing the rules. Uh, okay, so we do uh, Grail Knights into the Scorpion. Uh, hitting on three, using weapon skill six. Spooky. And change weapon skill two. No. Okay. Three to wound. Nice. You know, four. Oh. Go right through him. He's got no regen. And the Pegasus. Pegasus uh, one. No nope. wound. No wound. And then, did, uh, they, did they attack? They have not attacked. Yep. So we got uh, three in base, four in base, and then the fighting rank. And we're going to use halberds. Okay. Trace halberds. You are no, 60 the way. I'll use spirits in case it's prolonged. Sure. Um, fours and sixes. I'm gonna try to dramatically kill this Bretonian Duke who charged in over here. I won't I won't have enough attack. This like eight wounds in this unit here. Uh, he's only got three wounds. We'll see if we get lucky. Tomb guard! Uh definitely not hitting on threes. 
And wounding on... Ooh, those both wound. Minus uh, nothing. The strength uh, four. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Uh, so three up. One damage, we get a board. And the six up involved. Nope, take a wound. Done right. two. And then the War Sphinx. Uh, hits twice. And wounds once. Minus two. Uh, five up. Nice. And then... I, I got have my pilgrims. You got the little guys. Fours. This is it. I feel it. <laughs> this is, the, this one. is the one. This is the one. Nah. Nah. That was wrong. And then we have stomp that initiative one. I'll put mine into the Lord. Uh, but you... Uh, what? Well, sorry, that's quite a bit. It's five hits. And these wound on fours. Just three of them. Because you're monstrous, I can't uh, apply the Thunder Stomp AP, so you get your full save against it. We'll get the Thunder Stomp AP, actually, because you're not a monstrous creature, you're a monstrous calf. Five up armor! Nice. One and eight. the lady. Oh, one wound, it was close. Out me back. A two on max hit strength five, looking for fives. Ooh, ooh. Nice. Oh, you got two stops, oh, I see. One is AP one. Ooh. Uh, that's a fail, and uh, okay, he takes nice. one more damage. Boom, boom, boom. Two wounds remaining. Did two damage to him. You got a flank, got a rear, uh, and a banner, closed order. A rank. And a rank. Another closed order. And one more closed order because of the uh, Grail Pilgrims. So yeah, closed order from both. Don't forget, that's a big deal. Lance, Lance Formation, closed order, they stack. Um, but, but And you could be all in the same facing too. The Myself, I did what, two damage? I, that's it, I did two damage. I am an Indomitable 2 and I crumble 5. <laughs> so the Kemrian War Sphinx. Do you have timber by chance? It does have timber. No, not timber, it's got terror. The Necrolith Colossus has had timber, which we would have forgotten about earlier, but it would have only hurt my stuff and I don't think that would have uh, altered the, uh, in fact, it would have made it only <laughs> rougher for the Tomb Kings. So this guy is down. And with that, we can call this game done. There is technically one more round to go, but as you can see, the barren field, the barren field, the battlefield is very barren of the undead. I'll have this unit left outside of the hill, but they will die to the paladin and his questing knights. And I do hold the hill. The hill will grant me 250 victory points, which is nice. But overall, there are a lot of standing Bretonians here on this battlefield. And it was a grind. That was a long game. Absolutely. 3,000 points. And with, of fighting, of and, and with your stuff off on the side as well. Uh, I'm curious to check out the points. We obviously know it's a Bretonian victory, but it'll give some people who are new to the game insight to how scoring works, I suppose. Okay, calculating a few of the points. The way it works for anyone who's unaware is you get 100% of the points of a unit killed. And if you're able to reduce a unit uh, to, uh, I think it's like 25% below 25%, in this case it doesn't matter too much, you'll get 25% of its points. That's only relevant for those Grail Pilgrims over there. So I'll get 25% of their points. You get points for defeating the enemy in combat and taking their banners away from them. So that is counted. Killing enemy battle standard bearers are a few extra points, the enemy general, and any special scenario things are award points. Warhammer Fantasy is a game about meeting the enemy army in battle and breaking their forces and routing them. That's why the victory points are based around unit kills and what's fled and what is no longer on the battlefield. In this case, the Bretonians soared in victory points and claimed an outstanding, decisive victory, I'd say, as I got about a thousand victory points for destroying their units and capturing banners, plus the 250 points from the hill. So I'm around like 1250, 1300 points, whereas Steve has killed all of my army except for the Tomb Guard, the Banner, and the Tomb King, which comes to about 700 points of my stuff. So that means he's killed 2,300 points of my army. Uh, and then with some banners captured in melee and all that stuff, we're about 24, 2,500 so points. I, I, I missed something. You actually got closer to uh, uh, 15, almost 16 actually. Um, you've killed almost all my entire primary force. I have this unit. And this unit, and, oh, they, okay. uh, and they're dirt cheap. That's true. Okay, I did uh, Dad kill most of the initial force. All that you killed all the peasants, Luca. Except for these guys, I didn't kill those guys. Those guys crushed my. Oh yeah, they're part team. of the primary forces, right? Yeah, they they. So did. he's got like fourteen on me. Okay, overall about a thousand point and a little bit more victory point lead for the Bretonians, and I think you need to win by about two hundred to count as a victory. So that's a crushing, decisive victory. As I'm sure this Tomb King could hold the hill for a little bit, but all you have to do is harass him, harass him with missile fire. You don't even have to engage him. Or wind blast him off the hill. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Push there, him off the back end. There are many, many ways for you to deal with them on that hill. And that is it 
for this battle report representing the battle of was it Matoria? Matoria. Matoria. I actually don't think I could take that hill back from you with all these cavs. They're gonna take dangerous train from those defensive stakes yeah. you left behind. Me and... Mechanically with what you have left them, that two king would that hill. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, they they would cr they would roll crumble every turn, but they got leadership ten in there ten in there. So you never know. A few weird die rolls, you'd be okay. But for the most part, it might be kind of difficult. Then again, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> but that is it. The day is won for the Bretonians, and this is their battlefield. Everyone, thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for much much more Warhammer Fantasy. Well, the old world. If you like your stuff, Luke and I stream every Thursday night in Mountain Ventures. Oh, don't forget. Don't forget. Absolutely. Every Thursday. <laughs> and uh, lots to come. Yeah, geez. Uh, this was... Learned a lot, too. Forgot a lot, too. But... Hey, first game. This is, li guys, this is literally our first game. Yeah, and this is a 3,000 point game, too. It's a big boy. This one took a while to play. It was a grind. Yeah. I don't know how many 3,000 point games we'll do in the future, but... I know I want to, but eh, just <laughs> just sprinkled in there, here and there. Maybe we'll do less in the future. Happy Wargaming, everyone. We'll catch you next time very soon.